my people, and if you're watching live, checking us out on YouTube, or listening on your favorite podcast provider, you are most definitely my people. Welcome to another episode of Botch Pots and Chair Shots. We still have high hopes of delivering quality wrestling content, and if not, we'll sprinkle in everybody from Smack Draw, you know, so we still get over. I'm your host, a chef by trade and a mark by choice. I am the Will Gray. And tonight, my people, I'm so hyped for our journey. Tonight is the triple feature. We've got an AEW All Out preview. We've got a preview for WWE Clash at the Castle. And we have a preview for When Worlds Collide. Joining me tonight to help us break all this down, I've got a whole panel of people. He is the IWC's favorite hill. He hails from North Carolina. He is the host of the Hill Truth Podcast. He is Ted the Hillbilly Hill. Ted, how are you? Doing great. Man, I'm hyped you're here. I'm glad you're here. We talked about it before, when we were first I'm going live. i uh super hyped that we actually have audio for this episode. Lots of fun. Uh, also joining me tonight, he's the host of the Rewind. He's also the host of the Rewind and 22nd uh, Challenge. You can find him streaming and gaming on the Smack Draw Twitch. He's Mr. Kyle Tyson. Kai Ty, how are you? Dude, why have I never got the North Carolina intro? <laughs> North Carolina? <laughs> I'm super salty, bro. I live, I'm in North Carolina. I've been in here for the entirety of the show. I had to do something oh, special. Does. I had to do something special for Ted, man. <laughs> oh, dude, I'm, I'm always happy to be back, bro. What's up? How y'all doing? I'm glad to have you, Kai Ty. You're always, can't always the person. Situated in this stupid chair. Like, oh. <laughs> you, you, everything under control, their boss. I'm good, bro. I'm good. Thank you for having me. <laughs> Joining me also tonight, he's the Kennel Master. He's co-host of the Rewind, my Smacked Raw family. He's the Devon to my Bubba Ray. RN, how are you? Doing good. Uh, my new nickname is actually the African American Ace of the Smack Raw Pod. <laughs> African American Ace of the Smack Draw Pod. He's RN. RN, how are you? <laughs> Nothing. Just being the smartest person on this pod just makes me feel good. Just want to keep putting that out there. Love uh, you guys. RN is the smartest, but. Something super cool, making her debut as an official co-host. She is the brains of the Smack Draw operation. She's the Bonnie to my Clyde. She is the boss bitch. Allison, how are you? I'm good. Well, I just want to give a quick shout out to Hill Tactics on Twitter and the boss bitch for that ball and new intro we just saw. So uh, thanks to you guys for that. So the show now, since we've added Allison in a role, we'll have a few new few like fill and flows in some new places for the first time, we're going to send it up to Allison in the Botch Bitch's Corner for news and rumors. Hey. So, okay. We're, I have not prepared. Okay. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. Anyways. <laughs> Don't let me. Okay. So, news and rumors. Did, we just we lost, lost Ted. Ted. All right. Keep going. News and rumors. And <laughs> here we go. Okay. Um, so my first uh, rumor and headline is Braun Strowman decided controlling his narrative was no fun and is going to return to AEW. No, Thoughts? he's going to return to WWE? WWE, fuck. See, this is, this is why I shouldn't do this. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody have an opinion about uh, Braun returning? He has a block. He, By the way, he they they need to absolutely capitalize uh, and have Roman doing something innocuous, just minding his own business. And Braun just jumps and beats the shit out of him and screams, I'm not finished with you. If you <laughs> in a in a bubble, that will be one of the best one of the best things that I could witness. I hope he left the choo choo train shit on the Indies. That's all I ask. Yeah, as long as he doesn't bring the stupid choo-choo strain noises. He's he's built for WWE. He's a WWE guy. He was never big for, like, the indies were never his thing. Like, he always talked shit about the indies when he was there before. So, to me, I'm just kind of like, okay, whatever. If he comes back, great. If he doesn't, great. He's not going to affect my day-to-day -day life in wrestling. He's asked to me. I mean, anybody that watched our shows know how I feel about Braun. I mean, I feel like he has potential, but overall, I mean... Yeah, a lot of it was the shit event stuff, so hopefully Triple H can book him a little bit better. I mean, he's not going to know what uh, uh, you do on the day-to-day, -day, Will, because you're blocked. I am blocked by Braun Strowman. <laughs> That's fine. 
really. Um, Braun, is, Braun is there to eat pins. <laughs> <laughs> They're gonna bury Braun. I, I believe it. No, I believe it. Whoever, whoever, whoever keeps the universal title, whether it's Roman or Drew, uh, they'll go into a program with Braun. He'll come in, but he'll eat pins, and then he'll drop back down to the mid card and have some kind of feud with. Veer or Shanky or uh, Omos or something like that. <laughs> I think Braun and Omos would be a good man match. Like what? Yeah. Think about the fact. Think ah, about. Will... Listen, listen. Let me explain this. Okay. Watch. Okay. If you take two people who are really, really bad at what they do, you're guaranteed to get some comedic gold out of that. We're gonna have some awesome, hellacious botches if we get those two in a match. I'm willing to watch a Braun Strowman. Braun Strowman almost match in hopes that we see the most ridiculous, you know, seven minutes I've ever seen in wrestling. I'm glad you cleaned that up. Because that was uh, that was literally one of the uh, worst takes uh -oh. fucking on the history of the wrestling. I literally... I, I, did, I did mention almost. I'm bringing back UWO, right? Uh-huh. <laughs> we'll get Will fix on it, though. He, I get, he said... Uh, he fixed it though. I thought he was meant like like oh, he no. actually wanted to see that. No. no, I was being sarcastic as shit. Oh, yeah. I hate Braun Strowman. I'll make it perfectly clear. But yeah. my favorite thing about Braun Strowman ever is he made a comment about botch bots and chair shots about being a shitty podcast. And I was like, but you, he said we were the shittiest podcast he's ever heard. And I was like, but you have heard us. <laughs> <laughs> how do y'all keep getting blocked by wrestling? I talk more shit than anybody. I never get bored. Do you see how Will is in the group chat? Is it any surprise? <laughs> That's true. <laughs> you know, I, I don't exactly uh, get over very well. People either love me or they hate me. I pretty much gathered that Actually, much. that's not true. I think I got blocked by Alicia Fox. Next. Proudly. Uh, Proudly. Solo Sokoa is getting called up to join the bloodline. Do no way. Thank you. It's gonna happen, or in and is it too early? It should happen. They need a single. They need another single wrestler in the mid card besides, because I'm sick of the fucking Usos. Not not that I, they're not dope, and not that I don't love them, but it's too, they spend too much time carrying the mid card in single matches and stuff like that. I think they need like a singles wrestler to kind of take some of that burden off of them, let them be able to get some rest too, and then just spicing it up, getting having more than a three man fucking faction because like. WWE were allergic, was allergic to those for like the past 10 years. Like everything had to be three men only. So hopefully we get some more people added to it. I definitely think Naomi should be added to it too once she comes back. They were put on the roster without having any merch put back up yet. That's fascinating. Mm -hmm. I mean, they have Sammy, kind of. I don't know. I was kind of hoping to see him be like the anti-bloodline. Like, no, I'm going to do my own thing. But... Here we are. Noob says he's tired of Sammy. I like it. I think nah, the stuff man. Sammy's doing right now is genius work. Uh, I Sammy and Kevin are going to take those tag titles, and it's going to be one yeah. of the greatest damn pops you're going to get, man. I agree with that. I would have that strong prediction. I think we're going to have that. Then we're going to have the buildup. We'll have them win the titles, the breakup, and the buildup to a Zane kevin owens WrestleMania match. Shooting my shot. Split these titles up. I'm tired of this shit. Split them up. I don't think they I are want... split. Are in like one one guy wears one of them and the other guy wears the other one. But like I, just, I mean, my thing is if you're gonna have a brand split, either have just one set of titles or each brand has their own titles. Like I hate the the, the two straps and all that shit. Like it like it it's it's pointless to me. But yeah, I'm pretty much lukewarm on Solo Sokoa. I want to make sure, and the only reason I say I'm lukewarm on him isn't his entering work at NXT because he's a star. He's going to be great. My only question is, how are they going to use him if he does get called up? Because I don't want him to just get lost in the shuffle. And going straight to the bloodline, however appealing it might sound, if, you know, are we going to push him into the U.S. title picture? Are we going to immediately push him into the IC title picture? How are we going to do it? Because if he's in the bloodline, they're going to want to put a belt on him. I, that's, I don't think he gets lost in the shuffle. It's kind of impossible because there's the lane that he would be in, no one occupies. Like they, like I said, they don't have anybody in that upper to lower mid, mid card besides what the Usos are doing Like whenever they have singles matches. So you can take them out of that and kind of take that off their plate and let Solo be the guy that handles that. And you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I don't, yeah, I don't think he can get lost in the shuffle being as 
like I said, there's no one really in that lane that he would follow. And he'd be the enforcer because he's bigger than all of them, really. And, I mean, we just saw what he did with those uh, matches with uh, White Kali. So, I mean, he's, he definitely can pick, beat people's ass, so. Okay. Cool. <laughs> Okay, next. Uh, speculations running wild that MJF will be the mystery entrant to the casino ladder match. Is this a chance to build MJF as champion, and will they actually take it? I hope they don't put him in that ladder match. MJF, right. his impact needs to be in, in like a larger thing. It's kind of like it was kind of like a weird thing when they did that with a uh, uh, Hangman. Was they just that was his big return although story-wise i get it because he couldn't challenge but like mjf that just wouldn't feel like impactful enough like the man needs to come out of nowhere be a a a, 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 a like a twist in a main story not just he's entered in a match for the potential to win a belt like uh just feels kind of below like where the public holds him at right now yeah you don't think this is the perfect opportunity for TK to have him come in? Because when you look at the list of people in that match, and I know we're going to get to it, but do you think this is the opportunity for him to show he's immediately put on that top tier with a Claudio, with a Wheeler Yuta, with a Pinta, with a, you know, an Andrade, like Dante? Like, do you think it puts He's already him... there. He's already Ask there, all though. Of them. Like, to me, it's yeah, a wasted spot. Yeah. It's a wasted spot. And. Like, you already know he's going to win once you see him come out, no matter where he comes out from. Like, I don't think it makes sense. I think he's way above all of those guys. Like, he, that, none of them even, like, he, none of them are any close to the level that he was on you're, before he was gone. You're fucking crazy if you look at MJF and you see mid-card guy. Like, right. as a fan, if that's your perception, you, you're not paying attention to pro wrestling. No. Yeah, like every yeah, no, he's he's what, already whoa, 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 whoa. status. What about what I said said anything about him being mid card? All I That's said the was the mid card championship and the mid card uh The casino world. ladder match is that not for the opportunity to have a world title shot, the same one they gave him and But Adam that's Page. meant for up and comers. That's guys yeah. that are coming up. Like he's already there. Like he gets introduced as a main like twist in a story. Uh that's all I'm saying. Yeah, that's for the guys that need the strap the rocket tied to their back. That's literally the mid card title to me. That's like the, it's like getting the IC title. Like it is what it like. That's not, I, I would be disappointed if MJF came back in that. And won a um, chance for a title the, shot. Yeah, that the way. Only, yeah. The only way that um, I could see MJF being the Joker is first, I do think it would be hilarious for him to win a match when he's come out and he's old school and all time and all that kind of stuff. Well, that would be interesting. The second thing would be is if he did win and he got a title shot, but he played it a little different and he didn't just do it next week or two on Dynamite and he sort of did say like a money in the bank thing, I'll hold it till I'm ready. If they could incorporate something like that, I might could buy it a little bit. Right now, I don't think that he will be the one. Um, I'm going to go way out on a limb and I'm going to say, you know who thinks going to be the Joker? Nick Aldis. Nick Aldis? Yeah. That would be, that would be nuts. I, I haven't kept up with NWA. Is he missing right now from NWA, or what's going on over there? He's recovering from injury uh, right now. Mickey Jane. Yeah, but uh, oh, is he recovering from the injury? Because yeah. he didn't wrestle, and then he and Mickey James done with NWA? Uh, Mickey James is under impact contract right now. Uh, Nick Aldis is NWA contract. He just signed a new one. He went right before he lost the uh, 10 pounds uh, of gold to Trevor Murdoch. Uh, he re-signed long-term with Billy Corgan and NWA guys. Oh, uh, okay. Well, forget that. And that shows how much I get to watch the NWA. <laughs> Sorry. I, 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 I watch a lot of wrestling. I might not jerk off AEW like Kyle does, though. Hey, now, why are you taking cheap shots over here, buddy? You said I, I didn't fucking watch. You said I didn't watch fucking wrestling for the second time on my show. God. When did I say that? When the hell did I say that? I said Just, that like, like, you hold on to a grudge, Will Gray. That was you weeks hold ago, on Charlie to Murphy. a grudge. We have moved on this. We have all grown as a as a thruple, as a 
quattro. <laughs> as a as a uh, what what's five? What's the five? Kyle, is, Kyle is the Windful. resident stand, so I mean that 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 holds up in court. This is no stand. <laughs> we have moved beyond this. Okay. Well, um, moving on. Um, Access TV and New Japan are updating their New Japan televised program schedule. Is New Japan in America a realistic opponent for AEW as number two in the state? No. No. They're not going to get their roster like over here and right. No, um, no, I didn't. The the problem is access TV from the reports I've seen is only seen in so many million households in the United States that can even get it. So I don't even think that they can get the number, you know, because if access is there, everybody that had it would have to watch it, you know, in impact to actually get it. I think yeah, I mean that and the fact like you said we're not their roster is essentially just an indie roster that they sometimes ship over a couple guys from the main roster so like there's not like a real there's not any real draw there that you can hold on to I mean I know Tanahashi has been there a lot here over the summer but and uh the United Empire but other than that there's not even really I can't even name anybody that's like a mainstay there like everyone's kind of comes and goes there I think what they need to do is solidify a little bit stronger of a service in their streaming category. <laughs> New Japan World is cool, but the fact that one, you can't stream directly from your phone, you have to use a Chromecast to use it is weird, and two, you don't get access to any of the New, New Japan strong stuff on the U.S. soil. So it's only New Japan over there. So I think if they solidified a streaming service, I think that would probably give them it wouldn't give them enough momentum to take the number two spot, but I think that's what they need to do to gain more traction in the States is going to be setting up a more solidified streaming service. Because New Japan, so is it just like you go online? Like there's no like app or anything for it? Because I was trying to you have sign to, up for it. You have to what? sign in to New Japan World on your phone in Safari, then launch mm -hmm. the new New Japan World Chromecast app, and then it pulls from Safari what you're watching and casts it to your TV. Yeah, I got time for all that. Yeah, we uh, we can uh, share our thing with you. Okay, I cool. You. I got you. No. Um, okay, so here's a an interesting one for my last uh, news and headline. Does any but do any of you watch GCW besides Will and I sometimes? Every once in a while, I watch just like one of their shows. Okay. Shows or whatever. So like the hot thing over the last couple of I guess weeks now has been uh, John Moxley's match with is it Effie? Yeah, Effie. Effie, do you have y'all got have y'all heard anything about this? No. So, you can fill us in. Oh, I was asking if you had first. So, <laughs> uh, the match starts out. So Effie is like an openly. Um, LGBTQ wrestler. Um, and so he, starting out the match and throughout the entire match, uh, him and John Mosley are kissing each other back and forth. Um, at one point, there is a chokehold where Effie reaches down his pants and pleasures himself. Uh, John Mosley <laughs> lights a cigarette, smokes it in the ring, and then puts it out on Effie's face. Ah. Uh. So people are giving Effie a lot of crap for the match because he typically has a gimmick of kind of pushing a little far with some things. But he's claiming that Mox called the majority of the match, but Mox isn't getting any of the heat. Do y'all think that Mox has traded his drinking addiction for an addiction of crazy matches? Because he's bleeding every night on every night on dynamite, and then doing this crazy like GCW match. Well, as the person that's from Ohio and that saw a lot of matches with him back in the day early, <laughs> no, this is how he started. This is where his his love is. This is like the crazy, stupid, fucking violent matches. Like that's his bag. Like we just got he got kind of taken away from what he was when he was all those years in WWE. So the people that know Mox, that's the Mox that they know. 
they don't know the death match fucking czw mocks you know what i'm saying so like to me this is all par for the fucking course and part of the reason why i loved him before he went to wwe and i don't like the thing about it is like you said with him take he's getting the most heat because he is the the person that's from the lgb TQ community. That's why he's taking heat. If he was a straight wrestler, it wouldn't be an issue. They'd be they'd laugh it off and keep it moving. Like it, it always has to be something like, like we need to just fucking get over it. Like these people are, are are a part of our society. They're a part of our race. They're a part of our culture. Like everybody need. That's the whole point of wrestling is to represent everybody. So they need to be represented too. And sometimes there's some weird motherfuckers. Sometimes they're not. Sometimes they're like Sunny Kiss. Sometimes they're like Jake Ackles. Like there's there's literally a fucking ridiculous amount of different type of personalities in that community, and we need to be okay when we see, even if it is some weird shit. Like, sorry, there's. I mean, just get, get the fuck over it. No, I agree. Do you think that it would be different if it was two women? We've seen in WWE two women kiss in the ring, and people, you know, cheer and clap Absolutely. for that. Absolutely. I'd much rather see it with two women. Okay, here's my input on it. Um, I would never yuck anybody's yum. That's not what this is about. Okay? But for me, Moxley is the AEW world champion. If my eight-year-old goes to Google and Googles John Moxley and pulls that up, how am I supposed to explain to my eight-year-old who watches wrestling with me when she finds a John Moxley match that has that in it? That's my worry. I don't care. What, do, not- you have, what, do, you, what are you supposed to explain? Like, what are you worried about explaining? If she watches the Moxley X Effie match. It's yeah, but what, what, what is, what's what's the problem with explaining, though? Like, where's where's the issue That's coming in? That's what you're in? supposed to do as a parent. No, 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 no. The, yeah, the, the, yeah. The issue, the issue is that there's a moment in the match where Effie reaches down his pants and is pleasuring himself in the ring. That's Effie, Moxley not John shows. Moxley, though. No, so how, but if you, but if you if look you for John Moxley, Moxley and you pull it up, up yeah. That's my point. Have you go so, look at go see what your daughter's watching on TikTok and then check back in cuz unless you got a parental control over that shit like they've seen all this stuff. Like I've just had to have that conversation with my daughter with some of the things that were coming up on her TikTok and shit. I'm like, "Nah, bro, we're not doing that." So like a lot of that is on us as parents, but also too like there's nothing wrong with them. We have to have those moments where we explain what the fuck's going on sometimes. And really, like, honestly, at this point in time, there shouldn't be any kids watching GCW. Like, you should have that block the fuck off for sure. Like, I, some of the shit there, even not even when they're doing stuff like this, some of the matches there, like, make me want to fucking go to the bathroom and throw up. So, like, it, it's it's some gory shit, and it's fucked up sometimes. So, like, definitely we should not have any. There should be whatever blockers we have to stop kids from watching GCW. We need to do that. Fair. And let's not forget the John Moxley, if you look it up, you might find him wearing a gas mask. Yeah, I mean, it, it's just all performance. People are allowed to perform however they want to at the end of the day. Well, is that the last one you're using rumors, Allison? Uh, there's one more, <laughs> but I can't read the guy's name. Um, okay. Do you guys remember Lucha House Party? Yeah. Uh, Will, you can say the names. Cause, uh, oh, are you talking about Lu- uh, Grand Metalik? There you go. Yeah, Grand Metalik uh, debuted in Impact recently, uh, <laughs> which I thought was fascinating because he hasn't done shit since he left WWE, and all of a sudden now he's like thrown into the Impact locker room. I'm not gonna lie. I think he's actually wrestling as we speak, unless I'm mistaking this luchador with somebody else. On but, Impact. Yeah. Oh, that's live then. Yeah, or t- pre-taped, but yes, he's supposed to be Possibly. making his Impact debut. Uh, something like Mascara Dorado or something crazy like that. I took German, not Spanish. I can't say these names. <laughs> <laughs> so no luchador fans. No, I fuck with Grandma. He was my favorite part yeah, of that like faction, honestly. Yeah, he was a fun part of uh, uh, the the cruiserweight classic, man. Like he was a he was a big uh, shining star in that tournament. He did the those guys were the ones. My favorite spot is the Selena Del Sol, where they do it over the top of the ladder through the other ladder, going outside yeah. the ring. That was one of my favorite spots, and that came from Lucha House Party. He actually did it to the Usos. Um, 
That actually may have been Lince Dorado, though. But they both did the move. Oh yeah, no. Grand Metal Leaks, Grand Metal Leaks was shit. I, I, you know, I mean, like, I kind of he didn't get utilized uh, after that tournament. Like, Lucha House Party was was you know they were they were a merch seller. Like they were there just to entertain the children. Um, they weren't really there for the wrestling fans. Um, and you know, I mean, that's how WWE just wanted to use them. That's what they did. Um, but the Cruiserweight Classic, I mean, I think that holds up as one of the best pro wrestling tournaments I've ever seen. Um, and uh, like I said, yeah, he was a huge part of that. Grand Metalik was dope. He was one of the people I discovered in that, in that, uh, in, in that, in those events. Sweet. Is that it? That is all. That is. You did so good on your first attempt. <laughs> no, I did. It was terrible. Nice job. You'll you'll get the. We'll take the training wheels off. We'll we'll figure it out. We'll make it work. <laughs> all right, gentlemen. Meat and potatoes, and Allison, ladies and gentlemen. I got to get used to that now. Uh, we're gonna start. We're gonna start with AEW. We're gonna go through it. Uh, we've got 22 matches. One of the things that I brought up beforehand, I want to ask you guys right now what you think about it. AEW's uh, card for, I guess Sunday night is 11 matches. Shit. Okay. The other two pay per views happening this weekend, Clash of the Castle and Worlds Collide, together equal 11 matches. What do you guys think? about the size of the card versus the two WWE pay-per-views equaling each other out. It doesn't really mean shit, honestly. It's, a lot of it is because, like Kyle was saying, that they only go four times a year. I would I would like for them to split it up and do it two nights. That would be dope because, I mean, I don't think anybody understands how dope wrestling on a Saturday night is. Like, I mean, this Sunday is a little bit different because we're off Monday so we can get a little get a little tipsy, get a little alcohol in us while we're watching and enjoying it. But, like, there's nothing better than a Saturday night pay-per-view. I like Saturday night pay-per-views. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I, I, I'm right there. I, I can't lie. I, I, I'm with RN. It doesn't bother me how long they are based off of just how frequently the pay-per-views are. But, yeah, like, I, I ever since um, Wrestle Kingdom started doing it and, and WWE did WrestleMania two nights, I really don't mind the two-night pay-per-view format. Like, I do not mind saturday and sunday nights uh uh sitting down to watch the shows i think when when paced correctly and booked right it's it's a fantastic weekend of 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 wrestling i got no issues with it all right look at the main card it opens with uh brian danielson and chris jericho both these guys have been built the last surviving member of the heart dungeon versus the american dragon um, it's Daniel Bryan's or Brian Danielson's return to W or AW pay-per-views. I'm fucking that all up. Uh, how are you guys feeling about Brian Danielson and Chris Jericho? Uh, I'll come out and say it. this match is all about, uh, Daniel Garcia. I don't know how you could have a Brian Danielson and Chris Jericho match and they're overshadowed by who will the pupil side with. And I, I that's that's all where my mind is at. I should be stoked for the type of match we're going to have. But instead, I am so dialed in on will Daniel Garcia uh, align himself with Brian Danielson and become the fifth member of the Blackpool Combat Club. I couldn't be more excited. I think it's a brilliant story. Yeah, um, I think he should have been the one that was in there beside, before Yuta anyway. Like, that that shit never made any sense to me. Like, he was perfectly set up to be, like, Brian Danielson's uh, protege. So, like, I think that's what it's going to boil down to. He's probably going to cost I, – I think it's going to be a swerve. He's going to act like he's going to go with Brian Danielson. He's going to cost uh, him the match, and Jericho's going to win. Ted? Um, yeah, I'm like Kyle. Um, I think it's going to be great. It's about uh, Daniel Garcia, and uh, I actually heard Daniel Garcia in the interview say that one reason that they didn't go with him straight into the Blackpool Combat Club was because everybody expected it, and he knows how to technical wrestle, and he wanted to show a little bit more layers of his character by joining Jericho. So that was pretty much the reason he did that. Um, And, um, yeah, I think... I don't know how it's going to turn out, uh, but um, I'll go ahead and go with Danielson to the to win because Jericho will probably try to cheat and Garcia will side with 
Danielson maybe like take a chair or a foreign object away from him and then Danielson gets the pin and then Jericho tries to beat up um, Garcia and then there's a post match and then something like that. Yeah, you guys pretty much summed it up. I uh, agree. I think that I personally think that Garcia will, I'm agreeing with Ted, he's going to be the prevention of Chris Jericho winning dirty. He's going to stop it from happening, and that's going to be the turn that we see for him to join with Blackpool. Um, the interim world's uh, interim women's world title, Tony Storm, Jimmy Hayter, Britt Baker, and Hikaru Shida are squaring off in a fatal four-way match to uh, hold the belt until Thunder Rosa comes back. Double-sided question. Do you guys think, one, Thunder Rosa should have relinquished and it should just go to somebody new? And who do you think is going to win the interim title? I think it should just be their title. Like, I hate this interim shit. Like, I get why they do it. and It's supposed to be more like sports, but, like, it's just stop. Hand well, the title over. it's a built-in over. story, man. It's a built-in story. You have a... You have a uh, now, like instead of doing the the WWE trope where the the champion gets like a rematch or something, now you can kind of justify it. You know, I mean, I mean, you can always justify it when you got to give up the belt because of injury and you weren't beaten. Like that's that's to me that's the story. Regardless, when the champ comes back, I just hate the interim shit because it doesn't it doesn't let the champion the person that ends up with the belt feel like they're an actual champ. They just feel like a placeholder for when that real champ comes back. So. That's why I never I don't like the interim tag. Like I think it's like I think it's a downgrade kind of. It's not really like you're winning the belt. Like you're just holding it until the real champ comes back. And it's it's got to be Tony Storm. I mean, she's the person they've been building up the most, and I I think she deserves it mostly out of any of the women there. I'm cool as long as it ain't Britt Baker. I love Britt, but I'm ready to see just what other other women can do with that spotlight. Um, honestly, I'd love to see Jamie Hader win it. I think that would be pretty awesome. Get some more hater on my TV. Right. She is, though. Ted, what yeah, um, I think that as far as, like I said, the interim, the only thing I wish they would do with the interim is set a guideline. Like, if you're going to be out a month, okay. But if you're going to be out more than 90 days, then you have to relinquish it. Set a guideline and then go by it. But that's just me. Uh, they'll probably give it to Tony Storm. I predict her to win, but I would rather it be Jamie Head. I mean, if you're only going to be out on injury for a month, why even do an interim title? Like, this person's out for a month. Okay, we just won't see this title defend. It's not like they defend their titles that often, anyways. Right. So, like, if, and if she's going to be out anything more than, you know, like Ted said, like 90 days plus, like, she needs to vacate. Like, it's to me, it's dumb. It, like, thankfully, like, you know, only Sammy carried the two belts, which was dumb. Um, but, I mean, it it's like everybody gets a trophy. Bobby says there should be the 30-day rule from old school wrestling. If you're going to be gone for more than 30 days, you got to vacate the title. I can agree with that. I also think the interim title, like Ted, like you, piggybacking, if you're only going to be gone a little bit, why not build a story over that month while you're gone to determine a new number one contender through some cool, you know, tournament system. Tony Khan loves tournaments. You know what I mean? Figure out a way for your ranking system to make sense. You know what I mean? These are things you could do over the next month while we wait for Thunder Rosa to come back. Makes sense. Um, coming up next is the House of Black versus Darby Allen, Sting, and Miro. Is there any hype when you come to this six-man tag match? Any hype? Yeah. Any hype? Yes. Lord, yes. Sting, 63 years old. What is he going to do? I love it. He's gonna Miro's he's gonna jump combo. off of something, man. <laughs> <laughs> he's yes. gonna jump off something. <laughs> he's gonna break a hip. Oh. I love this. I, I love this. I can't Man. wait for this. Miro and Brody King going at it. Darby flying around. Buddy Matthews, Malachi, and Sting. Oh, yes. This is going to be one of my favorite matches. That, that ring is going to be covered in blood. Yeah. When are we, when is, uh, when is the, the duel of Darby and Sting? Like, what's the end game there now with those guys? 
Are we entering, uh, are we entering, like, uh, the Rey Mysterio and Dominic territory with those two? Yet? Kinda. I, I mean, um, I, I don't mind it. It is what it is. I mean, they're both pretty much mid, mid as fuck, so... Kinda goes together. Oh, back your tongue, are in. <laughs> Steve, Steve I mean, is they... now in the conversation of Mount Rushmore. Look at what the man has done. Let's start talking about Sting as a goat, and then the Mount Rushmore. Sixty-three years old. He is. He was, he was already in those career. conversations before he came back at seventy-four no, years old. How many times did you talk about him? Most people would say Hogan, Hart, Austin, Flair, HBK. Everybody left the Stinger out, but now. We've got to put him on the Mount Rushmore. No, no everybody that didn't man. talk about WCW left him out because then he is in the Mount Rushmore at WCW. I'm talking like, about by man, far. WCW, WWF. I'm talking, let's give the Stinger some love. No, I'm not going to lie. I, I'm actually, if you take a second to come back and you kind of look at the, the, uh, the work Sting has done, um, given his age and like it, like it, the matches they do is designed for for Kyle here because I love the Dar uh, demolition derby matches, all over the arena stuff. Like I love having those sprinkled in, and I feel like they found that niche with Sting. Like that's just his stuff, and it's been super entertaining, man. I, I I've really enjoyed this run. This is how I I prefer these old fucks to be used, where they're not really like taking much of the spotlight. They're putting over younger talent. Give him a win every now and then, but or give him some spotlight. But this is picture perfect on how you should use these old dudes when they come back. There you go. Hey, man, that's a good take. Do you feel that same way about uh, Trish wanting to maybe come back? Does she count in your old fuck category? Kind of, but uh, for the women, it's a little bit different because they don't have like they don't have as large a roster. And like at this point, WWE needs all the fucking women they can get. So like. I mean, technically, yes, I feel that same way, too. But the, the fact that their women's division is so depleted, like, and they have so many people that's out, like, they, they need all they can get. So, like, I wouldn't mind Trish coming back, you know what I'm saying? Especially if she can actually go. If she's not really – if she's looking like Lita was looking, then maybe not so much. But, I mean, if she can actually really go, then I'm kind of I'm I'm begrudgingly all for it. I think that this match will be one of two things. It's either going to be phenomenal, and it might be like, you know, a six-man tag match will never be match of the night. Not in my opinion. Just my humble wrestling opinion. I will very seldom ever say a six-man tag match is going to be match of the night when we have Brian Danielson and Chris Jericho or John Moxley, CM Punk, or the tree, like, I just don't, it, this match might be the best trios match on the card. I'll give it that. That's what I'll say. This might be the best trios match on the card. That's it's about. It's going to be a good match. Like, I mean, despite of all the shit we've talked, it's still going to be a dope match. I mean, there's a, help not be. there's a 90% chance of, you know, incredibly high spots and botches. Well, it ticks the box. Like it's, it fills the same spot like uh that the 20 not the 24 7 title but the hardcore title did back in the day it, it gets you that it gets you that hardcore style match but with the sting and darby it has its own twist with you're doing it with these uh like these bigger names that have kind of carved out their genre in it and mm -hmm. uh and like i think it's a i think it's it's just like a staple of like any show i feel like when sting does hang it up like AEW pay-per-views just aren't going to be the same with like a mid sixty-year-old man just throwing himself off balconies. He's like, the new. I, he's the new fucking uh, Terry Funk for real. He's the dude. He's the new Jeff Hart. Is what he is, man. He's just throwing himself off a of high shit onto people, man. I agree. Well, he's with sober, him. so he can't be Jeff Hart. I like the Terry Funk <laughs> analogy, Arin. That's a great analogy for what he's doing right now. When Funk when came back, Jack. yeah. <laughs> Chainsaw Charlie. Chainsaw Charlie, Cactus Jack. Push him off a dumpster. Let's get it over with. <laughs> uh tbs championship jade cargill athena do you think there's any chance jade gives the l here and gives the belt up she should if pigs fly do you think this hey. is the point to drop it so she can start building to the world title no keep the belt unify the, the title. title yes yes that is the champ versus champ match to make she overshadows 
any woman wearing that AEW belt. Like she makes that TBS belt mean more than the women's championship. I'm sorry. That's, that's why I don't think they should get rid of it. I think she they she should just hold it and then drop it when she becomes or or rock both of them cuz the women need the women kind of get shit on. They need a mid-card title too, especially how many women they actually have yeah. in AEW and look what this that title has done for her. It's made her it's she's really had her own fucking division to get ready and like Athena like I'm sorry like Athena is so garbage to me like I know she's dope in the ring. She is like, I'm never going to say she's not. She may be one of the most athletic women of all time, but like everything about her is so lame. Like, I just can't take her. I I just can't take her serious in any way, type or form. Like I want to, like, I want to be like, and because she's a black woman too. So like, I want to pull the race car for her, but like, she is just so fucking lame to me. Like, I just can't get behind her. Like Jay's going to destroy her. And I hope she does. I just hope it isn't a squash match, whoever wins. I don't want to get – I don't want a 45-second match. I think that both these women can work. Um, I've never seen a more – I've never seen a person start as green as Jade Cargill did and then make the meteoric rise and ascent that she has an ability. Anywhere in wrestling, man or woman. I've never seen somebody go from where she was at two and a half years ago or whatever it's been to where she's at today where she might not be... She's getting to that point kind of like when you talk about a Charlotte or a Becky. She's not the best women's wrestler. She's one of the best wrestlers on their roster now. You know what I mean? She's just showing out week over week. And when you look at what she was doing, like I said, two years ago with the Cody Rhodes stuff, you know what I mean? Like, she wasn't. Her debut match had Shaq. Yeah. She debuted, her debut match had fucking Shaquille O'Neal in it. Like, I, somewhere the big show was crying, man. Somewhere right. the big show was crying when he saw that shit. But she, God, doesn't need the, she doesn't need the fucking belt in any way, shape, or form, but. Her having a belt just makes her feel more major, and it makes that title feel more major. So, like, I, I, I think she should keep it well into the fact when she wins the AEW World Title too. Her walking around with two belts is just she needs that. Like, I think that she'll make both those belts worth more and mean more. But yeah, Athena, like, I, I just can't get down with Athena. I tried, like, she's just, I, she's just not for me. I say she wins it and then just wins the women's belt and then vacates the TBS title. Like that way, you still establish which belt is meant to mean more, right. and she doesn't have to eat an L when it doesn't feel like she should be eating an L yet, in my opinion. Like Keith Lee did in NXT when he got the North American title and the World Heavyweight title, Perfect. we won them both. Then he was like, "I'm going to give the North American title back so somebody can fight for it and show they're ready to challenge." Like I think that would be a good call, Kyle. Agreed. Appreciate that. That's a that's a, that's a good take. That's Thank a you. good take. Oh, look came at up y'all. with it on the fly, man. Came up with it on the fly. I love Kyle. He's my brother. I might hate no, him no, in the no, moment, are, but I, I still y'all, love I Kyle. Mean, y'all <laughs> Suck my ass, Will. <laughs> y'all agree it's rare. <laughs> See, this is the thing. I love Kyle and I hate Kyle so much. Like, at the same time, I've never met anybody like that in my entire life more than Kyle Tyson. Uh, man, I've been hearing it my whole goddamn life. <laughs> Ted, you got your two cents on Jade and Athena? You want to throw anything in there? I uh, just agree with pretty much everybody else. Um, you know, there was the rumors that before Statlander got hurt that she would probably take the CBS title. Uh, but now that she's hurt, uh, I think Jade should just keep it and just keep on with it. Noob also said, seriously, Jade's first match has freaking Shaquille O'Neal. This wasn't about Shaq being in the match. All I was saying is in her first (laughs) few matches, her in-ring work wasn't that good to be on live TV yet. That's just when you paint out her legacy. That's just like a crazy feather in the cap. Right. Just like that's just a crazy because, you know, like there's so much more that goes into people's legacies, you know, than just like title reigns. And just for your first match to have. Flipping Shaquille O'Neal, man. You know, like and the fact that she felt she knew that she needed to get better at her craft when she went to Daniel Bryan for help. Like that's the that yep. was one of the dopest things that I that I like that like she knew she needed work, so she went to the best fucking teacher she could find backstage. Like that that's the mark of a of a, a really good person that cares about their craft is you go to the best coach you can find. And like I said, and now two years later she's one of the best workers on the roster. So well, Jungle Boy and Christian Cage, guys. Uh, well, Jungle Boy and Christian Cage. This is probably one of the matches I'm most looking forward to, honestly. 
And I can't believe I said that compared to how I <laughs> don't give a shit. Didn't give I a thought shit you about. hate these old men, RN. Yeah. I do. I do. I do. I do. But the Bond villain Christian with the fucking turtleneck and the leather jacket. <laughs> I am a James Bond fucking fanatic. Like James Bond, like I've I literally have a box set of all the movies right here. I'm looking at like the Bond villain shit with the swooped over fucking hair and the, the turtleneck and everything. Like he had me from hello. Like I I, I was locked in <laughs> from the first time he came. So like, yes, I am anti old man. But let's be honest, Christian isn't really that and Christian really can go. And there isn't probably anybody better on the mic when maybe allegedly CM Punk. But for the most part, he is fucking diabolical on the mic. So I'm here for this match. And Jungle Boy is actually starting to win me over. He really is. Like the white meat baby face shit isn't really like my take. But him getting a little bit edgier, cussing a little bit more, saying the F-bomb and shit. Like he's starting to win me over too. But I'm definitely looking forward to this match. I think hey. Jungle Boy is going to win for sure. AEW needs to do uh, with Jungle Boy more what they did on Dynamite and have his um, have his promos be pre-recorded so that A, he can do multiple takes to get comfortable in his skin, and then B, even if he isn't still like flawless on the mic, you can edit it, edit it in post to, to, to have a coherent promo out of it. Not that he can't cut a coherent no, promo, just but like... It's Christian, it makes him look like even... It makes him look dude. even more ass than he is when he's really not... He's not that bad, but when yeah. you're going against maybe the best in the fucking company, you're gonna look like ass. <laughs> yeah. So what they what they did on Dynamite, I think was I thought was a uh, fantastically smart move for Jungle Boy in having his promo pre taped, and I feel like they should just keep doing it, man. Keep just keep that up. That was that worked beautifully. Ted Allison. Uh yeah, I'm down for it. Um. I think it's going to be great. Uh, the only twist that I'm worried about is is uh, Luchasaurus. Uh, is he really with Jungle Boy, or or was this a double turn and he's going to try to cost him the match? And he really is a Christian. Because he, he kept the bad guy music and look, like he he took on the evil look. And the only thing that he's done is just stopped blatantly. Protecting Christian. Has he gotten his hands on Christian? Luchasaurus? At any point, has he actually put his hands on him other than just leaving the door open for jung uh, Jungle Boy? Yeah, once, maybe that first time. I, think, I, think I think remember. He just grabbed him. Yeah, he just they grabbed him, right? Yeah, they haven't actually like went to fisticuffs or anything. Hmm. I don't know. Yeah, because I was thinking, I was like, this is a match where somebody on the outside has to get involved. And in my brain, it was a uh, uh, Jungle Boy's mom punching Christian in the dick. Like I thought, I thought that's, you know, but now that I forgot that Luchasaurus is a factor, that he seems much more likely to get involved in the match than Jungle Boy's mom. How you about you that? Grab somebody from not to uh, like spelling their uh, cannon three to come. Bobby, I'm sorry. Come again. What was that? Yeah, Ted. I'm sorry. You were breaking up. We couldn't get you. Ah. I said, unless you want to grab somebody that you can be on 90210, like you spell it, you come in. <laughs> <laughs> That's a oh, deep cut shit. for all you old fucks out there. Brenda coming in and hitting them with the uh, brass and ox, that'd be fire. Listen, <laughs> we're all old fucks. <laughs> Bobby said Cage could potentially. <laughs> Bobby says Cage could potentially lead a this match to a show stealer if they're both on. Um, this could be a sleeper for match of the night, but I still don't think it'll get it. Um, Wardlow FTR versus Jay Lethal and the Motor City Machine Guns. We've got another multi-man tag match. Do we, uh, are we hyped for Wardlow and FTR? The old school approach versus Jay Lethal and Music, Music City Machine Guns and the new age kind of high flyers and fast paced offense. New school versus old school. What do you think? I'm into this because I want to see? see the guns versus uh, FTR so we can see the real fucking one of the best tag teams in the world versus FTR. Ted's going to get you, RN. Dare you. You're lucky Ted's Ted's feed froze up there, RN. Because I'm <laughs> sure right now he is eliciting some some curse words your way. FTR Dude, this, this... is overrated, bro. Like, I'm not saying they're terrible. I'm not even saying I'm they're not saying not they're overrated. bad. They are not I'm, the listen, best listen. team in the world. You can be overrated and still be good. In the world. 
You can be the overrated best and team still in be the good. World, and I will die on that hill. I will well, die rest on in that peace, hill. Uh, hillbilly. Best tag team in the world. I'm about to start writing your, yes, your obituary right now on this day. Oh, hey, the w- psychology God. they do. The psychology. The I'm not arguing TV, none of that. That's to do all the spot. That's the thing with so wrestling. Like them, you can sell, say somebody is not is overrated, and also not think that they're trash. Like I do think that they are one of the best tag teams in the world. <coughs> Psych- psychological and old school wise, yes, they but are the best. Overrated. How because are they they're overrated? not the greatest tag team of all time, and they're not the greatest tag team in wrestling right now. Oh, I didn't say all time. I said right now. They're the no, you didn't in the say world. that. Dude. But I'm saying for the most part, that's how they are looked at as. One of the greatest oh, of all they're time. They're getting there. They're getting there. They're yeah, right I, behind I, Ole. Again, I agree they're, with they're all right of that. Behind, who's, who's the greatest tag team in the world? To me, the Young Bucks are. I mean, that's just the brass nah. tacks of it. Yes, sir. Nah, yes, sir. Are, that's yeah. my co-host. No, sorry. Talk about sorry. overrated. <laughs> the Young sorry. Bucks? The greatest Young, young Bucks? Are up there. Young first, Bucks are up there. Your company that they're in, who would be there without the Young Bucks? The Midnight Express and Arn and Tully. They're probably still trying. They're probably trying to get on AW right now. (laughs) You go back and you watch the Midnight Express and you watch Arn and Tully. Then you come and talk to me. I've watched all the matches. I'm not as young as you think I am. I grew up in the NWA era. I, I've seen those matches. The Minnes- Bucks are, I'm not saying the Bucks Minnesota are Wrecking right. Crew, Arn Anderson and the boys, all Brain I'm Busters. FTR is not the best I mean, team in the world. I, I, I love the Bucks. Don't don't get me wrong. I like the Bucks too, but I think FTR is better. I, I don't think they're overrated. Hey, on a, on a side note, on a side note, if Dax second half of the year in his single matches went as good as the first half i think he would be up for wrestler of the year though i'm not gonna lie dude like the first half of the year dax has been in some singles bangers like and and because of the injuries as a singles wrestler honestly yeah i think i think dude if like i said the second half of the year hasn't really kept up that momentum like i said please don't think i'm hating on them and saying that they're terrible as of right now, they are the best tag team in AEW. They are. They've had the best year. They've had the best impact. They've had the biggest moments. I'm just saying they're not. I don't think they're their pussy is on the pedestal that most most people, AEW stands included, put them on. That's all I'm saying. I'm gonna use that what? pussy on the pedestal. Hmm. That's all I'm saying. Well, I'm not we, saying they're terrible. All right. I know, but that's what I'm saying. When you've got when you've got Briscoe's one, Briscoe's two, Young Bucks, then you've got Dax's singles matches and all that, I don't see how you can say overrated. I mean, overrated <coughs> is what we call somebody that we talk about that aren't as good as we think they are. Underrated. No, that's is that's not who true at all. The accolades that they do. That's not true I, that's, at all. You can guess, be overrated and still be good. And that's what I'm saying. FTR I, is. But when you've got so many match of the year candidates in tag team and even in singles, how are you overrated? I, well, for me, I don't think they're as good on the mic as everybody claims they are. And I don't think their matches are that are as good and as crisp. Like, yes, it's old school, but just because it's old school doesn't mean it's great. And that's that's not necessarily what I want to see. Like, how many fucking wrist locks and... Uh, <laughs> And cross jabs and fucking punches and shit. Can you see? Like, I mean, this is the perfect segue to what I, the point I was trying to make at the GCW conversation earlier. I hate to interrupt you, Aaron, but I think you're making the the same example I did. I don't yuck people's yum. I don't like GCW because of what they do. So I don't watch it a whole lot. This is why I love watching FTR, though, is because they do traditional Southern wrestling. You see what I mean? Like, that's why we think they might be the best, is because. Like right now, rather. And Ted, you can correct me if I'm wrong, is because stylistically, their style appeals to us more than what the Young Bucks do. Right. And I and well, that's the thing. Their style, because it is old school, it does go with everybody. That's why they always have good matches. That's why their style just, it fits, especially in AEW, because everybody's, mostly everybody's so flippy and shit. So like, you know what I'm saying? That's what I'm saying. I'm not saying they're not bad. I'm not saying they haven't, they're not the tag team of the year. But every year we have a tag team of the year. It just happens to be their year. I'm just saying they're not all-time 
top one, two, three tag teams of all time, like most people are starting to put them in. That's it. That's all I'm saying. Argue with your mom. Well, I'm, I'm going to dis- disagree. If they keep on doing what they are, yeah, I think they're – you know, I think they're going to be right there. But listen to what you just said. If they keep on, they will be. I'm saying people are saying it right now, and that's not true. And you're saying that too. Fellas, I, I love this know because, G, because Jesus could come back tonight in the end of the world, and then it's all <laughs> over, and we just have to rest it on what And if got. a bullfrog bumped his ass, uh, didn't bump his ass when he jumped, we would too either. So, like, what Like, what are we doing here? Like, What, what, what we're doing is this all but, but, We are going to talk about – Hey, hey, be nice. I will separate the two of you and put you in a get along corner. I'm looking at you, Ted. This is your first show. Behave. Behave. (laughs) Um, FTR, Usos, Young Bucks. So the Canito Casino ladder match is next. Claudio Castagnoli, Willie Yuta, Pinta El Zero Miedo versus Ray Phoenix versus Rush versus Andrade versus Dante versus the Joker. Jesus, that's a lot of people. How much of a shit show is this going to be? Shit show. Yeah. Oh man, who's the Joker though? God damn, dude, it's it's if, a ladder match. It's gonna be gnarly. I mean, look at look at the people you got in there. You you got you got Cesaro. It's gonna kill it. Yuta and Phoenix, Penta L Zero, Rush. Dude, are, is anybody actually even gonna touch the mat? Like Jesus, Dante Martin. <laughs> I think it's gonna be a lot say, of fun because you're gonna have Claudio. You're going to have. Andrade and whoever the Joker is, I'm thinking that the Joker. If I if it's another high flyer, it'll surprise me. I think I'm gonna go with what Ted was saying. I could see it being an Aldis. I could see it. I know you guys uh, shit on the MJF idea, but I think it would be a cool story for him to come back in, win it, have a shot at the title, and start making a push for it. Does he need it? No, but I think it's a very MJF thing to do if he says he's better than everybody just to come in and prove it. You know what I mean? Like he he this is the ultimate chance for him to look at TK and go, "You have no fucking choice. Give me a title shot now." You know what I mean? That's why I think this is genius for MJF to come in here and win this. Cuz he could look good like it's I mean on paper that does sound like a good idea, but like I said, I just think at this point it's beneath him. To me it's like the Miz or somebody being in the Andre the, the Giant Battle Royal. Like that's that's what this equates to me. Do we think that maybe it could possibly be Jeff Hardy cleaned up his act and he could be the Joker? I would it literally, I'll match. cut the shit off if it is that. I'm gonna, that actually, to me, kind of makes sense. Like, I feel like that that whoever it is, like that's kind of the level of impact that they should have, though, is that, that just mid-card guy. I don't feel like... You can say it had to be Jeff, you asshole. Just say, like, that <laughs> should be about the level... Of the character it is, I think um, I'm hoping that uh, 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 we start slowing down on these big reveals because, you know, the laws of diminishing returns um, and with these with these huge debuts, like it, it feels like if everything is special, then all of a sudden nothing is special. And and we felt that with the last couple of people that come out. So I feel like the Joker spot shouldn't be a debut. It should be a return. Like that's that's kind of where I'm taking the scenic route to is it should be a return where they'd be Jeff, uh, the pure champion, Samoa Joe, um, something like that. Samoa Joe's the TV champion. TV champion? Who's the pure champ again? Cesaro. No, Wheeler Yuta. Right? Uh, Cesaro's the heavyweight champion. Wheeler Yuta. Yeah. Oh, shit. Yuta's the I pure. can't. Dude. Look, I don't. Belts. I don't make. There, there. There's a lot of belts. There's a lot of belts. I'll be the first to it. Bobby brings up a good point and says Lesnar won the Money in the Bank match and went on with the the cash in. How would MJF winning not be the same thing? Dude, everyone shit on Lesnar being in that match. Literally, until he fucking like came everyone out with did... the, doing, Dude. wearing it like a boombox. They literally shit on that. Like, yeah, Monday morning quarterback no. shit. Who do you fucking? Win? I'm pretty sure Mustafa Ali is still having nightmares. About hearing goddamn Lester's music when he was right fucking there. <laughs> um, I tell you another person I think that I would really like to see be the joke. Who? Is I want to see Jose take his shirt off and he be the joke. He can work. Jose the assistant. Let's do it. <laughs> there you go. I'll take it. He's I got think the crowd would fucking rip that apart though. <laughs> I think It'll Aldis be so... is the best. So far, that's the best choice I've heard is Aldis Rowe. 
he's the only person I can really think of. I mean, trying to think if there are any other who who else from WD got, WWE got fired in the last few months that they can pick up. Oh God, please just not be a debut. Like I'm, I never thought I'd be like tired of the debuts, but I'm like, <laughs> who's the last people to get fired? That's 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 why I'd pick one of those. <laughs> Um, Swerve in our glory versus the acclaimed Vince. The Vince. Vince is gonna. Oh, wait, Vince wait, is the wait, Joker. Wait, 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 <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Um, uh, Arian is Marie in the chat. What's his name from New Japan? Uh, are you talking about Okada? Oh shit, Osprey. No, 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 no. The other guy that had to fall out with New Japan. Oh, you're talking oh. about. Uh, Tomohiro Ishii? I, was it Ishii? No, 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 not Ishii. No, 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 no. <coughs> Kenny Omega and... Uh, oh, it was uh, B- oh, Bushi. Oh, yeah, Bushi. Bushi, yeah, Bushi. yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. What yeah. about Bushi? Yeah, that would be fucking dope. Osprey okay, that would says, actually be pretty fire. Yeah. I'm not going to lie. That would be pretty awesome. Osprey says he's done with AEW for the time being. He's going back to focus on uh, New Japan, so we know it won't be him. Um, that would be... Ibushi would be a great pick. To come in on that match. Plus, he that would fit be- the he would fit the the narrative a lot really well with the, the people in that match. Um, so that's a good call, Ted. Uh, World Tag Team Champions Swirl in our glory versus the acclaimed. Uh, do we think that this is the opportunity to take the belts off of Swerve in our glory? Is it still too soon? I think it's do too it. soon, but do I'm it. down for the both acclaimed these teams. are on fire right now. Fuck, man. I love both of these teams. These are Jesus my two favorite teams. Jesus Christ. Yeah, they're already teasing like that that turn. It's it's already cheesy. Just pull the trigger while at least the other team is white hot, man. The right. the acclaimed are just dude. They get some of the loudest goddamn pops every single night. They come out. I pop. I have an acclaimed shirt. Shit, that's the that should be the shirt I was wearing. But and yeah, do and it, man. Guess do who it. gets to and guess who gets to go see the acclaimed next month at an indie show in Hickory, North Carolina. Ted the hillbilly hill. <coughs> no. Ted the Hillbilly Hill, bro. <laughs> I actually met Matt Caster a few months ago. He went again. I saw him here at a at a tiny little independent show for a high school that one of the wrestlers went to. He went against uh uh who the hell he Cologne. Can't even think of his name. Carlos uh, Cologne? Is I, he a big I, dude? I he fool. looks like he's a big guy, man. He's big as fuck. Like I didn't realize dude, how he big looks. He is. That's what I'm saying. Like I don't think the TV does him justice. Like the more I see, him, I'm like that guy looks like he might be fucking jacked. Like he's like six three, six four, and like he's wide as all fucking get out. Like he's, he's and he does he's fucking jacked. He doesn't look tiny next to Billy Gunn, and Billy Gunn no, is a giant Billy, of a Billy man. Billy Gunn looks like he's seven foot and eight. I didn't so. notice how big yeah. Billy Gunn was until I saw him live when we were at the. Uh, the fan fest stuff for Starcast, Alice, and he's a huge, he, like he's a big guy, he's a giant. Yeah, dude. I didn't realize how big he was until I like when we saw him. I was like, holy shit, he's big. Um, I think this is the perfect opportunity. I agree with you guys. I well, I agree with Kyle. I think Swerve in our glory. This is going to be a, a weird question for y'all. There've been you've, you've seen the group chat. You and I, uh, we were we're all in there, and what we saw earlier sent to us. There's a long list of previous WWE employees that are being rumored that WWE has reached out to. So I'm gonna ask about tampering in pro wrestling if it's a thing. And two, when you see people's names like Keith Lee <coughs> and uh, you know Swerve. And uh, who were the other people? Brian Danielson was on that list. Chris Jericho was on that list. When you see some of the people's names that have talked about WWE reaching out to, do you think tampering is becoming an issue in pro wrestling? Tampering uh, is pro bre- wrestling. Everyone fucking would reach out to guys in different territories to get them to come. The whole Attitude Era and the Monday Night Wars was built off fucking tampering. Like, no, I don't care about any of that. And all these guys, I want them back in WWE. I want Swerve and I want Keith Lee back in WWE. They were both being pushed in NXT to the fucking top of the card. Swerve had his whole whole ass function, was getting rap concerts put on for him and everything in NXT. Like, please go back to NXT. Please, not even NXT, please go back to WWE under Triple H. So yeah, we can get a fucking WrestleMania moment and we can get the build for Swerve to be who I expected him to be. Because like I said, these are... These are two of my favorite wrestlers in the WWE before they got released. And everybody knows, I mean, hit row, how I felt about them. We just got Allison back unblocked. I was about to ask, Allison, what do you think about hit row? I love <laughs> hit row. <laughs> 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 no, I do. 
do. <laughs> for the for the people who aren't privy in the the chat, those listening live and listening on audio later, oh, uh, Jesus. Allison messed around and somehow got blocked on all, on social media by AJ Francis. It was my fault. It was literally all my fault. It was a misunderstanding about a tweet <laughs> so before we even is, knew each other. Allison turned out was extremely racist. But we introduced her to RN, and RN converted her. He healed no, her of her racist ways. No, no. It sounds like a it sounds like a Hallmark movie. A really angry black man meets a really angry Jew, and now they're best friends. <laughs> That's a Hallmark movie. The best part is I randomly just messaged Top Dollar. Uh -huh. No, no way. Like just to talk shit. Like, all right, I messaged him for you. Like, never in a million fucking years. <laughs> Thinking he responded, he responded in on less than five minutes. Yeah, and he was he like, "If she messes as... up, we're blocking everybody." <laughs> right. So we have we got to stay on our best behavior, I guess. Yeah. So he's like, "As long as she uh, agrees to throw out those tiki torches, man, we're all." What good. happened <laughs> was I made a tweet saying how I didn't like what WWE was doing with Hit Row. That was misconstrued in a terrible way. And RN ran with it and retweeted some not nice things without ever knowing me. And then AJ Welcome to the internet, Allison. <laughs> AJ Francis, who I freaking love, blocked me. Like I was so devastated. I've been blocked for like a year. Like, no, two years. Two years. I've been blocked for two years. Um, it really made me sad because, like, AJ was honestly, like, one of the first wrestlers that I really liked because when Will and I started talking about doing the podcast, the first thing I started watching was the WWE Treasure Show. Yeah. And he did that. So I freaking fell in love with AJ. And then to have him block me because something I said was, like, completely misconstrued without me even getting to explain what I meant. And then come full circle that. when we bring bot spots <laughs> onto <laughs> our group. Not realizing you two had met in this Twitter. In <laughs> this, you this, you guys had that. each other blocked and we were like, we no, can't. No, I didn't have her blocked. She I blocked. Oh. blocked. <laughs> I'm like, world? I don't know why she had me blocked. I don't know her. <laughs> <laughs> well, Ricky Starks and Powerhouse Hobbs. Uh, Oh, that was amazing. Can, oh, wait, Ted, wait a minute. Can I say something about can I say something about the tampering real quick? Yeah, I'm sorry, Ted. Yeah, go ahead. Um, on the tampering, to me, we just need to get rid of it because and not worry about it because it not only does it go on, Matt Hardy come out on his podcast and even said when before Jeff's contract ran out, Tony couldn't talk to Jeff. But he talked to Matt. Right. And at midnight, when it was up, and they were trying to get the plane tickets for the next day for him to get the dynamite, he went through Matt and said, since we all know Matt does all Jeff's business dealings anyway, he said, uh, do you think Jeff would be happy with the contract you got? And Matt said, yes. I mean, you know, and do we really not think that Britt Baker wasn't talking to Adam Cole? Facts. I mean, that they weren't talking come through, on. Like they just said, yeah. Well, I mean, if you go back in the, so the days, whole... like, agreed with you, agreed definitely with what RN was saying, you go back far enough. I mean, you start looking at some of the, the promoters in the 70s and 80s, they were literally trading guys around weekly. You know what I mean? Literally, Vince McMahon well, Sr. would loan Andre the Giant out to other territories so he could go work out west and be a spectacle. He could go to Texas and wrestle with the Von Erichs. You know what I mean? Like... Vince McMahon sent Andre everywhere because that's how it worked. And it was all about who could make each other money. And uh, right now we see that well, in pro wrestling, and it's not nearly the same as it is in the NFL and stuff. I don't think there's any need to worry about tampering. Right. I feel even, like it's I feel like it's, even, it's fast food drama. It's like, right. hey, man, it's been a slow news yeah. week. Let's, let's, let's just be upset about this or let's hone in on this. And, I mean, obviously uh, uh, Tony Zen doesn't do – he doesn't do himself any favors. You know what I mean? He loves to lean into that shit. Like that's just that's that's his style. But any, uh, it doesn't. It, it it feels like okay. I'm super bored and have nothing else to talk or think about. Okay, I'll lend some thought to this. It just feels like a non-factor. Yeah. Yeah. Agreed. 
Uh, it's just one of those things. So another one of those things is Ricky starts and powerhouse Hobbs. I think the dude can cry on command. Ricky Starks. Uh, yes, he's a fucking amazing actor. Jesus Christ, I will watch this shit solely based off of his acting abilities. Give that I man just, an Oscar. I don't like him as a babyface. He is a fantastic heel. I agree, Arian. That's for sure. I think he's awesome in the ring. Like like Kyle said, like great actor, great facials, great on the mic. But like, I just he's too fucking pretty. Like I don't. I hate him as being. A baby face. Like, I, I want him to be that <laughs> asshole Hill with the fake Brock Versace shirt and shit. Like, I, that's, the, that's what I want to see. You just want beautiful people to all be bad people. You can't live yes. with. Yeah. <laughs> you can't live with a beautiful person being a good guy. That's I, all it is. My, I've, I've, I've had that my whole life. Exactly. That's what I was saying. We're not good people. Us good looking people are not good people. Right. I want Ricky Starks to go over. I think he needs to make a hill turn. But I think Ricky Starks is just as valuable of a person on the roster when it comes to work rate and ability in the ring and talking ability as, say, an Adam Cole. I think Adam is more over because he had the exposure in WWE first. I think had Ricky Stark went to WWE instead of NWA, he could be Adam Cole right now. I think that's the only reason he isn't. I can see that. Everyone who knows me know I'm the biggest Adam Cole fan on the show, and I 100 fucking percent agree with that. I think he, I actually think he's better on the mic than Adam Cole. And if you had put him with the WWE machine behind him with the faction and everything like that, I definitely think he would be in the position that Adam Cole is in, and he might actually still be in the WWE and not cut back in a not in AW, honestly. All, all jokes aside, like. He feels like the type of person you would compare like like to like a Shawn Michaels, where it's just like I feel like the guy is incredible no matter what role you give him. Facts. Um I don't have to like I don't I don't like completely disagree. I do feel like with RN saying about like you want him to be a heel, but given like given the promo that he cut what was it, last week or something? Yeah. Where, dude, the dude broke down. Like, you watched his heart break as he was talking about uh, uh, Hobbs. And right. it, it won me over. I was like, dude, there's not a bad bone in this guy's body now. Like, it, I was completely it's won over. Amazing. So it showed me. Yeah, it showed me. I was like, this dude this dude can will take anything you give him and he's going to turn it into gold. The only you know thing I, mean? I hate about now this the is only how issue they... is... This, I... Go, go ahead. My bad. I didn't mean to cut you off. No, I was going to say, I just don't know who I want to win. I mean, naturally, obviously, watching the story, I want Ricky Starks to win. But I also want Powerhouse Hobbs to to feel like a, a major threat as well. Like, this match, I'm compelled where I, like, I don't want to see either guy lose now. My thing is, like, how does Taz just completely re- re- doesn't remember that they were Team Taz? Like, he literally acts like, like, like he doesn't know these guys. Like, when they're going through all this shit, like, you put them together like that. <laughs> That's some of the things too with AEW he started doing that with out, man. He, he, I don't know. I don't get it. He publicly came out and said, I'm done. I've wiped my hands. I'm, I'm wiped clean of, of Team Taz, which was a very thank. I, if, if any oh, faction I, had to go, but it was I get that. that. But I'm saying, like, him pretending like he never knew them or wasn't with them for two years, like when he's on commentary. Mm-hmm. That's the part I'm talking about. Yeah, he could be a little bit more personable when 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 their stuff is on. All right, World Trios Championship Tournament Finals: Elite versus Dark Order versus Best Friends. Who you got? I hope yeah. Elite. I mean, go ahead, somebody else. I I keep going first. My bad. No, it's fine. I I just this is the only one I really have an opinion on. I mean, they're going to give it to the elite because, you know, Kenny Omega just came back, blah, blah, blah. I mean, it is what it is. That's my terrible take, and y'all can trash it, because I know you will. Because I think, and I've said this a hundred times, I will 1,000% die on this hill. Kenny Omega is overrated. Thank you very much. Proceed. Listen listen to him cut a promo in Japanese, man. Um, I think Dark Order and Hang and Hangman are definitely going to be the the best fuck friends because you know because you got the drama of Hangman turning down the bucks. Hangman and 
uh, Omega, and this story just keeps on going. Um, I would, I, you know, probably the Elite are going to win, but uh, I, I just like the drama and the storytelling that we continue with the Elite and Hangman, and it just keeps going. So where is it going to go from there? That will be the next question. Um, you know, how is it going to turn out? That's what I want to see. I don't like any of these teams in it, and that includes the Elite as much as I love all of them. And Kenny Omega is one of my top five favorite wrestlers of all time. I just said how I feel about the Bucks, but I just feel like there were other better teams in this that should have got a <coughs> chance. Like, definitely, I think Dev Triangle. Like, if this was two years ago, maybe even a year ago, I would be okay with this final. But these, the all three of these teams have been asked the last year. Like, they haven't done shit. The, the Elite didn't exist at all because – Kenny's been gone. The the Dark Order's been broken up and split up and then kind of on and on, off and on. And the best friends have been the same thing, too. They've been gone to either Hurt or in Japan or what's-his-name was on a singles run. Like, none of these teams are teams that have done anything or have any real strength to say that they are the best trios in the world. Like, even though I know they, they're – this is the tournament, but, like, I feel like there's much better teams that actually have been teams and have been teaming this year that should have got the chance. So, like, as – like I said, as much as I love Kenny and I'm glad Kenny's back, like I don't I, I'm not a, I don't like this match at all. And I really don't think any three of these teams deserve to win. But with that being said, I'd most likely say it'll probably be uh it'll probably be Hangman and the Dark Order just because the will you the will they won't they shit they've been going through and this will kind of put a cap on their their partnership actually being real and feud with the elite afterwards, I would assume. But yeah, I I think that all these matches, all three of these teams don't deserve to be in this match or deserve to be the first trio champs. Yeah, I'm with you on that, man. It feel it feels like if you do it feels like Elite is the obvious pick. I feel like if there was any any predictions I would make this would probably be one of the most confident ones would be the Elite to win the trios. But it just it feels something off like on top of that. But it also feels like it's like off because they feel like out of all trios, they're like the pinnacle of the trio teams. Right. Like they're they're the most they're the, the the most associated with each other. They're they're the mountaintop, and it feels weird for a title to start on the mountaintop because unless you can truly make another team be a much bigger deal, they'll be like overshadowed. Uh, I believe um, the I, I don't know like if. The only if if the elite do win, the only team I would want to see dethrone them that that could uh, elevate them would be actually uh, uh, House of Black, um, and and I'm only saying that because the the uh, 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 the Lucha Bros already had their crowning moment over the elite in the Young Bucks, so they don't need to revisit that territory. And I think that if the elite are going to take it, the the people to dethrone them, you got to get House of Black going. Um, Alistair Black or Malachi Black is going to be the biggest thing to slip through AEW's fingers if they don't take advantage of that guy and everybody around him while they have him. Um, because he's actually a person I feel more confident in AEW, even though they haven't given me a reason to. Like, I feel like if he goes back to WWE, I don't know. Like, I know he was great and I, I definitely could be wrong. But I, I actually kind of like the idea of him sticking around AEW, whereas Keith Lee and Swerve, I actually feel like are, are perfect for WWE, like our Ed said earlier. I, but the so. thing with that is, like, I, I, they're the most underused faction in the company, and then we're back to what all the shit that's happened to him now in AEW is what's happened to him in WWE. But my thing is, Triple H is back, and Alistair was always on top of the card until he got pulled up under Triple H. That's the thing. All these guys we're talking about are Triple H guys, yeah. flat out. And that goes to the Buddy Murphy, too. These are all guys that he utilized and made look like something. So, like, I, I wouldn't mind if the whole fucking faction went back to W. Because to <laughs> yeah, just... I love Brody. Brody is fucking amazing. Like, he is he is top-tier talent to me because of everything he does. And we, we haven't even really got a chance to hear him on the mic yet. Like, that entire faction is fucking lights out. I love that faction. And... We don't see enough of them in singles matches or anything. Really, I think Buddy maybe has the potential to be the best one out of the whole group, but we never get to see him do anything. Like, you know what I'm saying? So, like, I don't know. Like, I definitely, to me, I think that's one of the ones that should have been in it as well. But we'll see what happens. All righty. The AEW World title. John Moxley, Sam Punk 2. What do we think? 
My thoughts exactly. <laughs> I mean, I was just gonna let somebody else go. Like I, I, I was just gonna say that, dude. The the promo we got from CM Punk on Wednesday, I think, was really really good. I think it was actually pretty awesome. Um, however. I swear, if it is simple, if it really is, the story is as simple as CM Punk, the fighting underdog babyface, wins the belt clean, I'm going to feel like that's just a huge misstep in this story. Like, I want to see, I want to see them have CM Punk turn heel. I really do. Like, uh, even in Chicago, like, he'd have to, like, get desperate or something or maybe even lose and and send him down a spiral but if the story really is as plain as cm punk you know the the the, the courageous underdog um comeback story if if that's all they're telling it's i think it's gonna fall flat but if cm punk wins because he realizes he can't beat him without cheating or without being desperate something along those lines i'm i'm i i, I think that would be a better story to tell but think it's going to be gnarly one way or another and the fact that it is in chicago you know that crowd's gonna um come alive for for it no matter what so it'll translate well on television i think i'm over CM punk so i mean i'll either either way i don't really care about this match honestly i hope moxley still wins i can't believe i'm saying this when i've actually enjoyed moxley as a champ i still think the walk the shoulder walk and all that shit is lame and the music is terrible but his actual like promos and stuff like are believable now and him in the ring like this. I think he's found his niche is that kind of like halfway brawler, technical wrestler kind of at the same time, but also like re re ready to get bloody. Like this is the type of Moxley I'm down for. And like, I hope he fucking beats CM Punk. I can't believe I'm saying this. If you go back and check one of my first original contents on this, I did my top 10 and CM Punk, I think was three. But this version of CM Punk, this bitter old man, pussyfoot and ass CM Punk, like I'm so over this shit. Like it's it's. I don't, I don't know. Like this is it, it's it's way overrated to me. So I hope, I hope Mox wins. I want Mox to win just because I don't want to see the title get bounced around. And I know it's like, well, it can't bounce around if it goes from CM Punk to Mox back to CM Punk. I just don't think now is the time to change titles again. They did a really long reign with Kenny Omega that went really well, and then Hangman had that that kind of floating champion role and then he dropped it to CM Punk and then Punk got injured. So I feel like if they have another title turn, it's just going to hurt the title versus helping build it any. Overall opinions on AEW All Out before we pound through the WWE side. Um, can I can I comment on Mox and Punk? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Ted. I didn't mean to leave you out, Bubba. I'm sorry. That's all right. Um... I'm going, uh, Punk's going to win because that was one reason they had the dynamite match to make Moxley look strong. Yeah. And Punk, I do think, is going to turn heel uh, completely because you're already seeing the steps of it because um, shoot work, work, shoot, whatever. Uh, regardless of what you say about Hangman, Hangman is still over and we can say punk went off script we can do whatever but that didn't get him any favor when he uh, attacked hangman uh, my question is uh, and i said this on my last episode was the bte segment with hangman in the dark order when was it taped mm. oh while uh, 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 CM Punk was in the ring talking shit. That segment was gold, by the way. Way to fucking take a, a chicken shit and turn it into chicken salad. Do y'all know what he, what, what uh, Ted is talking about? No. So, so there, yeah, go okay. ahead, Ted. Go ahead. So oh. on BTE, <laughs> Hangman was helping the Dark Order train for the trio title. And a guy opens the door and says, Hangman, you know, Punk is out there in there, and Hangman tells him to get out, they're training. Okay, so if they taped it on Tuesday night when some of the talent got there, or Wednesday afternoon, then Hangman really didn't know the promo was going down. If they taped it Wednesday while they were doing the show, or during Rampage while they were doing the show, 
then somebody was very quick thinking and said, let's make a BTE segment because tomorrow the internet's going to explode. And Hangman they was did, still not acting like it was so bad. And they did the they same did thing. On, oh. Well, ahead. I was going to say, I'm sorry, man. They did the same thing for um, Matt Seidel when he botched that uh, shooting star press when he debuted and he yes. like almost killed himself. <laughs> BTE, now granted, it was a little bit more playful, but they had um, Nakazawa, I think his name is, um, yeah. uh, 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 get slighted by Seidel. So in retaliation, he slathered baby oil on on the turnbuckle and they you know they right. took they took a bad situation and made it story uh, so with all that saying punk has went on against hangman wednesday night punk calls out the uh fat virgin person in the crowd <laughs> um, jesus punk i think is going to go heel and i think somehow in there he's just like the straight edge society He's going to form a faction. Now, are we going to get the new Nexus? What if MJF is not in the ladder match? But what if MJF costs Moxley the title because MJF doesn't like Moxley either? What if MJF and Punk have reconciled and they form a faction together? That would be. Cool. I don't know. I would there's a lot. Words. There's a lot of possibilities. Really but I do think Punk is going to win turn here. I do think Punk could will Could you turn imagine him. MJF and... Could you imagine MJF and CM Punk sharing a ring, just trading blows towards the crowd? Instead of insulting each other, just, just roasting the crowd together back and forth. Uh, it would be like... I don't know. I think it would be fantastic. Agreed. All right. And also, if Punk wins... And then Punk has got some beef still with the Blackpool Combat Club. Then we'll probably see Punk and Daniels. But we really haven't gotten into that yet. That's what I'm waiting for. Danielson would fuck him up, man. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Just Danielson yep. would fuck Punk up, Stretch bro. Stretch him with fucking six legs from Sunday. That's what I'm waiting for. Oh, God, yes. Nice. All right. So, overall, what are you guys thinking about All Out? Hype wise, I, like I can't wait, man. Yeah, definitely yeah. like a seven, seven out of ten. Allison Does it Ted? and uh, Worlds Collide over overlap? Uh, Worlds Collide is Sunday. I thought they were going. Oh uh, no, Worlds Collide is yeah, it's Sunday afternoon. It's going to be the same time as. Uh, Clash of the Castle. It's going to be like 10.30 in the morning, 11.30 Eastern time or whatever it is. Um, because I thought they were running against each other. I thought Worlds Collide and All Out were going to be head-to-head, -head, but they're not. Because I forgot it was in England. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. So, so call me a Sim, call me a Mark, call me a Stan. I don't care. I am so hyped for this. Give me a 9 out of 10. I am hyped. I cannot wait. Allison? Like a six. I'm still not hyped about having to pay 50 fucking dollars for it. Uh, <laughs> I need a network. Thank you. Um, I mean, it is what it is. I think... Um, oh, sorry. Yeah, I mean, I'm mildly hyped. We'll see. I think collectively I'm more hyped for the whole weekend, all three shows, than I am any one show individually i think enough of the cards have good matches to where i'm gonna have matches i'm gonna like from all three shows um now that we're through with AEW, we've got to power through 11 wwe matches as quickly as possible because we've been on the air for an hour and a half <laughs> so <coughs> edge ray mysterio versus judgment day how are we feeling about edge and ray mysterio and the judgment day going head to head we've got uh, Dominic about to get some ass out there, man. We're gonna watch Dominic spit his game. He is going. Him and Rhea are gonna become like the internet's favorite couple. Do we uh, think? Got, do you think we're gonna get the Dominic uh, Rhea Ripley match that everybody seems to think we're moving towards with the intergender no. wrestling? You don't think WWE will pull the no. trigger mm -mm. when everybody no. else is doing it? You still don't. Rhea Ripley's gonna become Dominic's daddy, bro. 
<laughs> like they're gonna be they're gonna be like the most obscure like romance angle ever, dude. He's gonna be oh, like Channing Tatum and Danny McBride on this Dan. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good cut. Yes, yes, that's exactly what it's gonna be like, man. Oh, I can't fucking. No, wait. Dominic. Dominic's grown out the mullet. He's gonna turn on his dad and say that you're not my real dad. My real dad taught me how to be a wrestler. Good. I hope God, so. Dude, Shit. That would fucking be brutal. That'd be a hell of a story. Oh, it'd be so brutal. And he reveals like an Eddie shirt. No, nah, because then people would cheer for him. Right. Yeah. That's, that's weird. Yeah. Play the hill turn. Um, we have an intercontinental title defense on a pay per view, guys. How are we feeling about it? We've got Gunther versus Sheamus. Match of the night, bro. Match of the weekend, bro. Probably. That's what I'm This could yeah, very match well be. Match of the fucking weekend. This will be match of the night for this pay-per-view. The only one that I think could trump it is going to be Riddle Rollins. I think that's going to be the only match that could beat it. The only reason I give this match the edge is because of the t- it's a title match. I think it's Sheamus is going to show good. out. He's going to win the belt. I think he's going to dethrone Gunther. Um, I just, I just, I see it happening, uh, because of Seamus having a chance to shine, you know, in Europe for the first time since he left the Indies before he came to WWE. Ted, what do you think, uh, Gunther Seamus? Uh, Seamus for the win, like you said, probably match of the night, uh, another, uh, Walter dragging off top match. Um, one of those. Heavy hitting, I think Trips has said, you've been held back, Seamus. Go out and show them what you can do. Mm-hmm. 100%. She- people need to hurry up and start appreciating Seamus while he's around, by the way. Um, we uh, we have a lot of favorites that, that, that put on banger segments during the COVID era. And as much as I detest like anything that reminds me of those empty arena matches, Seamus was a in-ring MVP week after week. Uh, and, and he deserves so much praise for giving us like legitimately badass matches, especially that um, uh, like uh, 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 one he had with Drew McIntyre, where he went through the LEDs in the Thunderdome and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, no, Seamus she- deserves some praise, and I'd love to see people start appreciating him. And hopefully, you're right, uh, Will. Him him having a sh- like a, a banger of a match in Europe can be kind of like this weird coming out party for Sheamus, even though he's been here for like a decade. All right. All right, Riddle and Rollins. This is the match that I'm probably the most hyped for. Um, I'm a little bit upset that we didn't get it at SummerSlam because of a kayfabe injury. Um, I like the build to this match. I know that uh, Matt Ritter won't be happy for me to say it, but I think that... <coughs> I think that the two of them together, sorry, have the ability to give us match of the nights. What do you guys think about Riddle Rollins? This is the match I'm most looking forward to. These are probably my two favorite wrestlers in WWE right now. So, like, I've, I've been ready for this from the beginning. I, like I said, I, I think Sheamus and uh, Walter is the match of the night. But if this will be the other, if it's not that match, it'll be this match. That's the match of the night for sure. Allison? I mean, you know me. I freaking love Seth Rollins. He is my number one. Um, I really hope he wins, but I have a feeling that they're going to put Riddle over because they've been pushing him so hard. And Seth is the most losingest, you know, wrestler on the roster. I stand yeah. by the fact that Seth Rollins is the Babe Ruth of the WWE, man. Babe Ruth struck out a hell of a lot, but he was still one of the greatest to ever do it. Seth Rollins sure. can eat as many L's as you want to give him because at the end of the day, he's still going to be Seth fucking Rollins. Right. You know what I mean? Like, it doesn't matter how many times he loses because every time he wins, you're going to be like, fuck, that was a great match. You know what I mean? Like, um, period. Uh, I agree if... Seamus and Gunther <laughs> isn't. This will be match of the night for that. But I think with the Cody series, I think they're going to give Seth the win. And because this is such a personal feud, they'll run it back uh, for a plunder brawl at Extreme Rules. That would be a hell of an Extreme Rules match. Uh, next on the card, we've got the the triple threat match or the the trios match: Bianca, Alexa, and Oscar versus Bailey and the Bailey Buddies. Um, with Bailey's return at SummerSlam and everything being built up to this match, what do you guys think about them finally crossing? 
Made it to it. I hope they give them a name. Shit. They're they're the control your narrative girls, man. The Bailey buddies. I thought they was. I thought they was BSK. What? I'm voting for Bailey buddies. I don't give oh, a shit. Man. I want them to win too. I know Bailey and them. I think Bianca might get the win with Alexa because we know Alexa and Oscar are getting pushed. But I would really like to see Bailey and those guys go in there and beat them and continue that skyrocket. You know, just let them keep going. Just keep pushing them well, to the have, moon. Yeah, you have an established team facing off against a makeshift team. The established team should be the winners, obvious in in my That's opinion. That's not how WWE operates. Um, we'll should be some. Eh, we'll see, man. We'll see. This is where yeah, the. I think Bailey and them. I think Bailey and them need the victory, uh, and uh, that's what I think they need the victory. So hopefully they'll get it. SmackDown Women's Title. Liv Morgan may be having the most underwhelming title reign in recent memory. She cries every week. She seems hyper emotional, and she still can't wrestle or talk. How quickly does Shayna Baszler, Baszler murder this woman? Five minutes. Not, not fast enough. It's not. She's not winning this match. I wish to God she would, but she's not winning this match. You think they're gonna keep Liv on top, Arian? Yeah, I do. Ugh. Ted. Uh, yeah, I think um, they're actually going to because Triple H is patient. Look how patient he was with Bo Dallas. Bo Dallas, the long lost brother of Bray Wyatt. Fucking. They made Liv a loser. Like, they took yep. this girl that everybody was like the. the, the once she was again, the internet we, sweetheart, man. She Everybody loved not her. Only, she was the underdog, like, but that was the thing is she was a classic underdog story that got the crowd behind her pretty organically. And then you have her come out and tap out and lose to Ronda. Like, literally, she lost. She tapped out. And you think that that's because the ref didn't see it, that the crowd is going to no. Like, the crowd wants their, their baby face champs to win correctly unless it warrants cheating like they're getting back at their opponent but when you come out and you just flat out lose it doesn't matter if the crowd liked you or not beforehand you're a loser in their eyes and you don't deserve the belt you know what I mean and like and they fucking sabotaged her it's like one of the weirdest one of the weirdest things I, I saw them do with her and then Ronda was out so it's like he you didn't have, deserve it to begin with you, they you missed their opportunity made. with her a year ago I, that, that's, I mean that's yeah. it it was just weird, man. It's weird. I'm ready. I I'm over the live thing. Like you have to build. You have to now build another story for her. Like, but her is champ. Just I. It's I care less. I would love to see it on Shayna again. I'd love to see it with Shayna with with trips in her in her corner. Oh fuck yes, dude. My favorite Shayna Baszler is my favorite female wrestler, maybe of all time. Definitely of this era of women's wrestling. So like, I'm all for her winning the title and. I I really in my heart of heart I, I hope that's what it goes to, but I just don't see it happening. Like I, I'm kind of with what Ted's saying. I think Triple H is going to give her some time because he has proven that that he does like to give people a chance to flesh it yeah. out, to figure it out, and to correct it themselves before he pulls the plug. And she hasn't had that much of a reign. Like, and I don't necessarily all, all the way blame her either for the lacklusterness. Like I no. I think that she came in at a weird time when all the sh turmoil and shit was going on. And like everything, they're always a day late and a dollar short. Like they missed it when she organically grew her own following and the crowds were going fucking. She was getting bigger pops than arguably Roman and all those guys at that time about a year or so ago. And they they made her lose to Becky. Like, so I, I don't know. Like, I I don't want to completely shit on her. But like we said, it's been lackluster. And I, I think they'll give her a shot. But I, I hope Shane wins. But I think Liv is winning this for sure. Yeah, and here's the other thing that we don't talk about right now is with Bianca probably set to go against Bailey, whoever wins, whether it be Shane or Liv, there's the elephant in the room that is getting ready to come back. Charlotte Flair. Maybe. Oh, man. <laughs> I mean, she might, like... <laughs> I mean... 
she's coming back. She was on Stone Cold. She's getting ready to come back. And her she will probably Shana, be on I'd, SmackDown. I'd love to see her versus Shayna. I think that's yeah, a program. Yeah, that's so, a cool matchup. That's a program we deserve yeah. over uh, over Liv Charlotte. I think Shayna Charlotte's what we need. Uh, I agree with that a thousand percent. Undisputed WWE Universal Championship. Is there any chance Drew McIntyre takes the strap off Roman? Yes. Oh, no. Small yes. chance. Are you saying over or under fifty percent? Me. Period. Anybody. Under. 50%. Way under. Under 50%. There's a chance. chance. There's a, you're one in a million, so you're saying there's a chance. <laughs> First of all, he's We're home, almost so in that, that territory, but... Yeah. First of all, he's home, so we know that never happens, regardless of his Triple H or even in, in NXT. Like, you don't win in your hometown. Like That's, that's like, number one thing on your WWE contract. You're going to get uh. your ass kicked and bloodied if we go to your hometown. So that's that. And second of all, like, he's not... I don't. He's to me that is he still wasn't built up enough. I know it's been fired these last couple of weeks, but two weeks does not make a contender. So, to me, like I just don't think nobody's proven that they're ready to to take down Roman. To me, so dude, uh, his his video packages were fantastic. Holy shit, dude, they were so good. Um, I mean, yeah, two weeks is kind of short, but. He made me a believer that he'll go home with one of the belts. And I just I just picture like that fucking just that stadium in the UK. Talk about like they could do such good faith with those fans. Well that was um, my that's what I was saying about the two titles. Like just say they're both up or say one's up. So then that way you still got Roman with the title and you get to get the other title back to Raw. Yeah. Like, that that's the part like that said, I'm saying. Like separate them fuckers. Yeah, yeah. No, no, dude, like okay, is he gonna take both belts off Roman? Zero percent. It, could he go home if only one belt's on the line? I, I'll give him like a solid 12. I'd feel a hell of a lot better about it if one belt was up on the line, but they're saying it's both. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Then, no, he ain't got chances now, man. Nope. Ted, what you think, man? This one I'm split on. Um, part of, I mean, as far as me personally, um, I would love to see Drew go ahead, even though. I don't think the build has been that great, but uh, I'm just, I'm just, I'm over Roman. I've been over him for a long time. So um, I don't know. Uh, they may probably, like I said, they'll probably just let Roman win. Then he'll go on against Karrion Cross. Then he'll go on against Braun Strowman and whatever. I think they should split the titles, let Roman keep going the Universal Champion through a thousand days. Let him hit four figures. But I agree. I think USA needs a championship on Raw again. Uh, overall emotions of WWE Clash of the Castle. Dude, I'm here for it. Yeah. I can't wait. Like, I, I'm actually, I'm very stoked for, honestly, like all three shows. But I think Clash of the Castle might have, I might be more, more excited for that one than even, say, uh, uh, All Out, to be fair with you. I'm definitely. Whoa. Whoa. Wow. Um, that's, that's what turning you guys over. are. The, no, you guys paint me as the shill. I never admitted to being one. Like you, just because you don't admit narrative. to it, don't mean you're not. Hey, listen, man, listen here. I can tell you as soon as I started admitting to be the old man on my porch, yelling at the kids to get off my lawn, Kyle, life becomes a lot easier, bro. Just accept it. <laughs> no. I'm a full of reversal. I'm actually more excited for all in but i'm i'm here for this one too i think the builds for these I, it just sucks that kind of triple h got kind of thrown into a lot of these storylines in the middle of it uh, i i'm i'm gonna be more excited for the next pay-per-view because i feel that'll be when yeah. he gets to reset everything and then we can honestly say all of this is triple h because i right now like yes he's had his hand in it and we can definitely tell but i think a lot of these feuds and things are going on he's just kind of trying to wrap up so we don't just have like a complete yeah. ab abrupt halt to shit and bring stuff out of the blue, which we all complain about. So I think after this pay-per-view, this will be the hard reset and we'll get to see officially the Triple H era begin. So I'm, I'm kind of hyped for it for sure. I'm, I'm, I'm about an, I'm, a, but I'm about a seven too. So yeah, I'm about seven for both. I'm seven out of 10. Hey, look, I would totally be down if, if like the first thing that happened was raw opened up and there's some weird video package saying that we traveled between dimensions and we're in a new universe where 
the fucking t- where everything that we knew about the previous WWE is not canon where we are now. Like I would have been just as cool with that too. Well, I'm down with it. Multiverse shit. Let's go. Hey, we we, dude, we it's know already in their branding. We it's know already the, in the branding. We know the WWE doesn't give a shit. Like they rewrite history all the time. I mean, just call it what it is. They make up tournaments. Like, the IC title, the South American Championship was never a thing. It's true. <laughs> it's true. Yeah. Like, the North American Championship was, the South American Championship wasn't. You know, Pat Patterson never beat Johnny Rods. Johnny Rods never held the South American title. It was completely fake. So I could see WWE just making some shit up. It's not out of the question. Once I mean, it, think about how it, it pretty much is. It would explain why Karrion Cross all of a sudden di- isn't like fucking out of a, a, a goddamn that Mel Gibson movie, uh, uh, fucking uh, Mad Max. of the Christ. No, it was more no. like Rick and Morty. <laughs> yeah, when Rick and Morty went to that different planet and had the I know what you... his sister was banging. That's it. That's yeah. more accurate than uh, uh, which was a pair another like an even funnier Mad parody Max, of Mad right. Max. Yeah, but that one was more. Uh, that one was more the accurate of it. Oh, I think he was more out of Fifty Shades of Grey. <laughs> Fifty Shades of Grey. I'm like Christian Grey's less oh, successful cousin. Your name is spelled different. <laughs> it is? <laughs> is it spelled yeah. different? Yes. Hmm. So I spelled it the right way then. Um, NXT Worlds Collide. I'm going to give you guys a match. You tell me your hype level and who you think you got. Cool. Carmelo oh, Hayes, Ricochet, North American Championship. Melo no, don't miss. Kaita. Oh, oh, oh! I thought I thought it was you were just assigning a match to one person. Fucking yeah, Melo don't miss, man. Allison, Ted. Melo. Melo, because he's hot. I love him. <laughs> That's the only uh, thing I got from Melo. I'm going to be the unpopular opinion here. I think that this is the reason why, though. I think this is going to be a very Triple H thing with the way NXT is going to be branded. I know Melo don't miss. And if he wins, I'll be hyped because I think he's the shit. I think Melo also needs to be what Swerve was supposed to be. Melo needs to be on the main roster and be competing on the main roster. He's main roster talent. He doesn't need to be in NXT. Ricochet doesn't need to be in NXT either. But his style of wrestling makes sense there. So Ricochet going back, a Triple H guy winning the title seems big. Uh, unifying the NXT tag titles, the Creed Brothers, Brooks and Jensen, uh, Briggs and Brooks and J- Briggs, Brooks Jensen and Josh Briggs, Jesus Gallus, and then Pretty Deadly. <laughs> I don't even know who those people are. <laughs> they're uh, Brooks and them. They're a 2.0 tag team that went over to fucking NXT UK and won the title somehow. So, but I mean, it doesn't even matter. They're ass. It, this should be most likely. This should be the Creed brothers. But uh, yeah, I, I'd say the Creed brothers. Uh, same here, man. Um, all four teams got something to prove. Uh, Creed brothers, though, slowly creeping in to be like a legitimately gnarly tag team. Um, a less funny American alpha. Right. Ted. Creed, Creed Brothers, why not? Allison. Um, I'm just going to go with whatever RN said because I don't really watch NXT. And uh, I trust It's getting RN's better. I it's agree. It better. is getting better. I watched NXT yeah. on Tuesday night and I was like, okay, this isn't terrible anymore. Uh, no, I'm going to go with the Creed Brothers as well. I think that makes sense. I mean, I don't think Pretty Deadly is going to get the belt. I think they're big enough over there that... They're going to want to put their big tag teams in NXT Europe when they re-roll it. So they're not going to want to get these guys tied up in a bunch of programs in NXT right now. They're going to want their roster ready to roll. Um, Katana Chance and Caden Carter versus Dewdrop and Nikki A.S.H. Women's Tag Team Titles. I could care less. This is another one of those Triple H matches for me where I just see Dewdrop and Nikki A.S.H. getting them because they were so successful in NXT. I just see him slowly moving his people back there and having his black and gold run. <laughs> just, it's the black um, and gold invasion. <laughs> yeah, that's all this is. In my opinion, it's just the NXT black and gold invasion. Awesome. They're coming back. You um, thought they were dead. Uh-huh. 
I don't I don't care who wins as long as Dewdrop gets her old name back. Yeah, pay, bring back Piper. Is that a new dog, Allison? No, it's Peanut. No. Where's the cat? What was the cat's name last week? Chester. Chester. Chester alive? Ch Chester <laughs> alive. <laughs> Chester is alive, guys. Good to know. Um, I think Dewdrop Nikki ASH get the belt once again. This is the black and gold invasion. RN doesn't give a shit. Nope. Allison, what you think? I go sign with Aryan. I don't give a shit. I, I need Dewdrop's name to be changed. I need them to... She needs better ring gear that is like... Okay, here's my beef. As being a plus-size woman myself, like there are better ways that they can dress these plus-size wrestlers where they don't look terrible. And I feel like... I know that a lot of them pick their own gear, but like Please do something better. Like, please stop wearing these shiny unitards. Like, it's awful. Like, she's a in, beautiful. In her defense, she wore that shit even in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even before, like, even in NXT UK and even on the Independence, that was like her thing. Like, the shiny singlets yeah. and the ridiculous makeup. Like, that was kind of her, her thing. makeup is fire. Like, that's not what I, like, am irritated about. I just feel like. Because she's overdoing she, it. I yeah, agree. she's overdoing it. Like they they've programmed her into play into this, okay, you're this big girl, you better act like a big girl. Like you can be awesome and not have to play that like big girl role. And, and I the, feel like the name Dewdrop just makes that whole <coughs> like stereotype of her being a big girl worse. Right. And the worst part is too is that she really can go in the ring and she doesn't move or yeah, wrestle no. like a, a giant like would like you think a big girl would like but we've never got to see that because of course like you said oh she's a big girl so she has to be like a mean monster like we've yeah. never really get to see her like she can fucking go she's top five maybe in that entire women's division as far as like wrestling like actual wrestling we just never get to see that because she of, goes they're never gave her a chance to she goes along with what i was saying before about a woman who can wrestle as good as some of the men do if you right. look at her indie work from the uk she was wrestling men in england yeah. before she got into the nxt program like that's how dominant she was and it's not about the size because you see smaller women let candace Lorray is an example of this small women who can work like men you know what i mean uh, she works more like the flippy dippy side of it. But when you look at Piper work, you see her work and she works like a man. She body slams yes. like a man. She bumps like a man. She her is a Michinoku driver is fire. We still don't get to see her use it. That's what I'm talking about. She wrestles yeah. great, not wrestles great for a woman. She's just a great wrestler. Just period. End of story. Yeah, and they don't use her. And I know like, like her and Nikki asked to be in this tag team together, you know, like United Scottish women, yay. But like, it's terrible. Like, I hate it. It's so awful. Like, anyway. I just want to take this time to say, remember all those people in our original group chat that said that Nikki Ash was uh, going to be a winner and it was going to be make money and kids were going to be into it. And I told all of them in there that it was ass from the start and not even two months later. She was already out the door, like never, like just want to make. I wish we could get, go back to that original group chat so I can say all you fuckers, <laughs> I told y'all so. <laughs> yeah, uh, I mean it's terrible. Women's championship match: Mandy Rose versus the NXT UK champion Miko Satomura versus Blair Davenport. Fucking Blair Davenport Fire. is gonna win this shit, dude. Fire! Bro. Fucking Blair Davenport. That's gonna be one of the best women or people to come over from nxt uk right. oh man she yeah she's gonna step it up i do feel bad though because like when she was in uh, AEW, she did like give like uh brit baker a concussion like immediately but um <laughs> i'm beyond that and uh uh dude yeah she's she's fantastic and i can't think of any other reason why they were make it um, it could have been explained and i missed it but why would you would make it a triple threat if she was not gonna be the one winning it Right. Well, a lot of it was she she was up for a title match and then got hurt before she was supposed to get one over in NXT UK. So she just came back from like a horrific fucking injury a couple months ago. So that's kind of why she's thrown in it. Mm -hmm. Ted, what you oh, got? She, she's awesome. Uh, Davenport. Allison? 
uh, again, <laughs> signing with RN. I also feel like that this is an opportunity that they, like, taking the belt off of Mandy, they can push her up to the main roster because we all know that there definitely needs to be more women there because they ain't got a pretty uh, toxic attraction. They were on SmackDown this past week. Right, right, right. But her, like, fully on the no, main No, I meant, like, I'm, no, yeah, I'm yeah, asking. Yeah. Like, I thought I thought I heard something that they wrestled yeah, her. Yeah, they, they were in the, <laughs> the, <laughs> the tag women's team. tag. Then they got hurt, and that's why they had to do that second chance fatal four-way match was because hey. they replaced the Kita and uh, – whoever she was tagging with because she oh, got yeah, hurt right. and then toxic attraction came in one and then got hurt so they did the second chance fatal four-way to replace them and that's how uh, we got to where we're at <laughs> this may be stupid and i may have just toned like tuned this out did we talk about the clash of the castle women's tag match for the belts did we talk about that I think we did. no we didn't no we didn't, we didn't. You're totally right. That's not on my list. I totally blew that off. Way oh, to well, go, no, I Allison. thought they were doing the finals. I thought they're doing the finals this Friday. That's what. Well, they are. They're doing the finals on SmackDown. It's yeah, not on the doing card. The finals on SmackDown. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, wait a they'll second. Be a, they'll be on the card. They'll face Sasha and Naomi, and Sasha and Naomi will win. I hope so. That's, well, that was gonna happen. be my thing. That like Sasha and Naomi <laughs> were gonna like come in and interfere. Anyways, I'm kind of moving on. <laughs> Braun Breaker versus Tyler Bate, not Tyler Bates. I hope it's Tyler, but I think it's going to be Braun. I think it'll be yeah. Braun. I feel like, yeah, I, I, it feels like Braun. You know who I wish it was? I wish it was uh, 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 somehow Tommaso Ciampa. Like, going I back to Goldie? Just, just going back to Goldie. Just just reuniting. Can't keep I'm, them apart. I'm going to tell you right now, Tyler Bate is what they wish Braun Strowman was. I mean, uh, Braun Breaker it was. Agreed. I think Braun is carrying the clout of being a Steiner. I think he's a fantastic worker. I think he's he's doing great things, but I don't think he's the best that NXT has to offer. No, he's not there, and he's even brought me around. Like I'm still not. I still hate the God shit, like you know all that stuff. Like, <laughs> but he has gotten better. Like he's gradually got better throughout this process, which is a good thing that he's getting this good and getting better as he goes along. But I just don't think. I never thought he was ready for it. I'd much rather, I mean, you can see Carmelo is way more polished than Braun. Like, I thought that he should have been the one to be the top spot. But, like I said, it's Tyler ba Tyler Bateman is who they thought Braun Bra Breaker is. That's that to me. That's agreed. Ted. Uh, Tyler Bates going to win, become the new face of NXT. Let's go. And they're going to go ahead I'll and hurry it. it because. Because Braun is a Steiner, they're going to go ahead and rush his delivery up to the main roster. Braun Breaker, Solo well, Sikoa. I think both of those guys are going to the main roster. You know what they'll do? Is they'll do the same thing that they did with his uncle. They'll take a champ that the crowd is uh, maybe uh, not as keen on, and they'll put him <coughs> in there. Just like they did with Scott Steiner going against Triple H. Braun will go up. And he'll face off against Roman, and they'll stink out the joint again. It'll run in the family. <laughs> It'll just run in the family, dude. Guys, we did it. 22 matches. It took us two hours to do it. Whew. Are you tired? Uh, it Are was 40-something matches. Of course it took fucking two hours. <laughs> <laughs> this is my favorite part of every episode, though, because I finally get to stop talking. I just got to listen to you guys talk. Kyle, I'm going to let you tee it off. You go first. Oh, fucking. Hey, everybody. Um, I have a Twitter. It's uh, <laughs> at the Kai Tai Show. You can also follow the show channel at like Smack Drop Pod. And then we have like our YouTube, our uh, uh, Twitch that you're on here right now, I guess. Unless you're watching the recorded version, head on over to Twitch. Because then you're going to see me play games over there uh, and also host uh, the Rewind with RN, um, who's actually on this side. Uh, He's above well, you. Yeah, no, it's a lot. Like, on, on the stream, he's on top of you on the stream. Um, Yeah, I looked at my one. RN. <laughs> up there, man. Um, <laughs> but, uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So check check it, check it that all out. And and, and, and and thanks. I love you, Kyle. <laughs> Fuck. Yeah. Ted, plug your stuff, my friend. Um, 
at Hillbilly Hill on Twitter. That's the only thing I do because Facebook is of the devil. Um, <laughs> and <laughs> the Hill Truth Wrestling Podcast, Spotify, Google, Apple, wherever you find your podcast from. And in case you guys haven't figured it out, uh, I am the newest member of the Smack Raw crew. And soon <laughs> <you'll be able laughs> <to also laughs> <laughs> and uh, soon you'll be able to find my stuff over on their uh, things like that. And uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, I'm number one in Antarctica. was recently in the top ten in Ireland. And uh, we're always doing good in Bangladesh. <laughs> hey, we need to steal that Antarctica's number one uh, wrestling podcast. Let's go. We, yes, we can't, we man. We're number, two, we're number two to his. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> I'm, Damn not, it, man. I'm not the number one. I'm not the number one wrestling podcast. I'm the number one podcast in any genre in Antarctica. <laughs> Let's I go. overtook. I overtook the conspiracy Nephilim buried in the ice by the government podcast uh, a few months ago. I'm going to start announcing this as being the number one podcast in Antarctica. I don't give a shit. I'm using it. <laughs> oh in. my god, <laughs> brother! Plug your stuff, my man. Check me out on Twitter, Mister Eight Nine Eighty Four, uh, AR Eighty Nine on uh, Instagram, Route Four Kennel on Instagram, uh, Mean Jelly Bean Productions on YouTube, Mean Jelly Bean Memes on Facebook. Hit me up if you're gonna argue about anything. And welcome to the squad, Ted. Could appreciate everything you've done for us this past, uh, really the past year. You've always been one of our number one fans, plugging our shit. So it was only right we brought you under an umbrella. And glad to have you. And I need my invite to the show, bro. Okay. Allison? Um, you can find me on the tweeters, uh, just a girl 918 uh, You can try to follow me on Instagram. I might approve you. Um, also, just a girl 918 um, Things we do. I make uh, the uh, Heal Support Group. It's a funny little comic that I am not very regular on uh, with my action figure collection uh let's see what else uh you can if you live in the middle tennessee area you can also follow my photography page on the facebook uh allison siegel photography and design yo check it out she's super talented fire thanks y'all uh i post on the bot spots facebook some really dope wrestling photos when I'm not super behind on that with my 1,001 side hustles. I am the queen of the side hustle. Uh, I'm going to come up with like a full shtick, but for now. Uh, Mr. Gray. Well, here we go. Wait, wait, wait. Plug our stuff. Plug the stuff. Don't do the thing. I was going to. Oh, you like took your big like deep breath like you were going to do like I lied. I was going to fuck up and go straight into yeah, the outro. Fuck, yeah, fuck um, follow the Indie Wrestling Gazette. It's our new newsletter fully focused, fully, focused solely on independent wrestling. I stumbled through that one. Um, find us at Indie Gazette on Twitter. Uh, follow us on, you know, the everywhere else pretty much. Um, we've got the Orange Ribbon Rumble coming up. We had to reschedule due to some conflicts with our the, the wrestling promotion, but it is on the books. It will be coming in October. But... Now, as we close another episode of Botch Bots and Share Shots, I want to take a minute and thank you for listening. Remind you to go wherever you do anything on the internet. Facebook, Instagram, iHeartRadio, Twitter, Spotify. Literally, you have all the options. Like, follow, subscribe, unsubscribe, but then subscribe again. Leave a comment telling me how great I am or how terrible we sound. Either way, it helps the algorithm. It helps find new listeners. If you're feeling really generous to be one of the VIP people, head over to Patreon.com and donate to the Smacked Raw Podcast Network. You get some fantastic swag. We get some free guests. It's a win-win. Four. Are in the kennel master, Mr. Kyle Tyson, for Ted the Hillbilly Hill and the boss bitch Allison Siegel. I am the Will Gray. Thanks for stopping by and listening, my people. See y'all Sunday.